The train headed for Sunset City will be departing soon.
That would be like, like I think we'll do the PowerPoint a little bit later, but I think it'd be better if people don't know who this character is and like what happens to them. Not much like to that, say that would be sure. So whenever you're thinking about mentioning his name, just say PowerPoint Party. <laughs> or if you mention his name, Dylan, you have to brute force your way in with the PowerPoint. I'm not very gonna, assertive, like, but I'll try. You're gonna have to be. You're gonna have to be. Everyone has to learn to be a set at some point in their lives, and this is your moment. If you can't walk over two nerds like us, what are, when are you going to do it? So true. All right. Oh, that's a good point. This is your moment <laughs> to finally be one of the footballers. <laughs> I'm thinking a lot, though, about that one moment from that comic, though, and how it like aligns with the Sonic philosophy. It takes me back to that quote from the front <laughs> of the Sonic 1 box art that says, Don't just sit there and waste your precious time. When you want to do something, do it right away. Do it when you can. It's the only way to live a life without regrets. And I'm just thinking somewhere, some guy that was contemplating murder read that and was just like, it's time. <laughs> That's you know, on the Sonic point. 1 box art? Yeah, yeah, whatever you do, do not give a Sonic 1 box to Vladimir Putin. What the hell? That's such that's such a funny quote to have on your video game. I oh, love dude, that. they all had them. Um, like Sonic Two had a different one as well. Um, let me find it. Yeah, it said, can you handle it or something? Like obviously yeah, referring to a nuclear it. bomb. Uh, the the Sonic Two one is the same as the first game <laughs> for some reason, but Three I think has a different one. Um, <laughs> does it have a different one? <laughs> I think I might be wrong about that, know. but Sonic CD has one. Okay. This what is, is it? This is where I stop the episode dead to just look up something on Google as I always do. Um, but okay, all right, let me find it. Oh, this picture's really low res, but I'm gonna try my best to live a life of power. You must. Ha no, it's too too blurry. Can't can't read it. But right, hang on, hang on. <laughs> just chat amongst yourselves in the in the meantime. Oh, okay. Uh, Why well, can they can they hear us yet? Or are we? Yeah, are they we can hear us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Sunset City Podcasts, the uh, the Sonic podcast for the classic and modern age, or alternatively, the Sonic fans after party, which is yeah. something we've been toying around with saying. Pup forgot last week. I didn't forget. I just uh, wasn't ready. <laughs> you don't need to say it. You, you can say you forgot. It's okay. No, I wasn't ready. All right. Emotionally. Well, Pup wasn't ready, but I am. See, he's already, uh, he's doing well, it. He's becoming assertive. He's a football player now. That's well, badass. <laughs> I'm tackling it right now. This is Today a great we're, uh, gonna be, we're talking with, uh, well, actually, here, everyone, I'm Garrelus64. Hi, Garrelus64. Garrelus. Uh, here today, as always, with Pup, Channel Pup. Hi, Channel Pup. Name. And then today we have Ian Waffles and Loart here to talk about some Archie Sonic insanity two archie Hello. experts hey there thank you very much for having me hey, of course of course it's uh, already been fun it's only been like 10 minutes in this call so <laughs> now dylan uh, i've already got the sonic cd box art quote up not that it's relevant anymore but <laughs> if you want to go through the terms and conditions while i prepare oh. myself to read this yeah, incredible quote so uh, we've got a Patreon in the description you can check out. You're able to send in questions for guests, and also it just helps out the podcast, of course. Which I forgot to and do this week. And also, Super Chat, and we forgot to do it this week. Pop forgot to do it, not me. And Super Chats, we read at the end of the stream, uh, and as usual. So that'll be fun. You can make us say awful things. It's happened before. Don't encourage that, though. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't encourage that, but it's happened. <laughs> no, but when they say things like, God, Rouge the Bat is so hot, I'd fuck her. Like, I, I'm i saying it because the Super Chat says it, but I'm not disagreeing with it either. Um, so that, yeah, just want to make that clear. If you send those things yeah, in, yeah, it's just it's stuff so I'd say funny. anyway. You're not getting an own on me. Yeah, they say <laughs> the things we're afraid to say, but we'll say anyway for money. Yeah, yeah. You guys are stronger than us. All right, that Sonic <laughs> CD quote. 
To live a life of power, you must have faith that what you believe is right, even if others tell you you're wrong. The first thing you must do to live a life of power is to find courage. You must be ready to reach beyond the boundaries of time itself. And to do that, all you need is the will to take that first step. Is that they the quote that you the think book. of when you think about how hot Rouge the Bat is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, you have to think of the power. You know, live for today. They spit not for, in fact. Not for the lawsuit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about Live today? in power. Uh, Rouge the Bat, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we love Oh, the gosh. Here. Yeah, we're, we're talking. Uh, it's so funny that that's on a box art from so long ago, though. Cause can you imagine, like, like these days, the shit you see on box art is like E ten for everybody, and that's it. A good time. Like they don't do play anything. it. Enjoy. Yeah. Includes you know, DLC. Or Nintendo Switch. The deal. New funky mode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sonic Three doesn't have one. What? Sonic Three didn't have a quote. Oh man. What were they thinking? What about <laughs> Sonic Eat and it, Knuckles? Eat it. <laughs> it seems they discontinued it with CD. It is what it is. It's it's over. Wait, wait. Oh, oh! I found something, but it's not in my language. Okay. Ah, I, I I can do what this. What language is it? Just hold it, hold it, hold it. Wait. Oh, oh, oh! No. Yes. No. Can't read that. Here we go. I... Wait. No, it's not yeah, loading for res. This. Okay. He's going through things so, right now. That's all I know. It's, impor it's important. We need to move. <laughs> we need to move. We we got to move on. I can't keep. I can't keep getting. Up. I found it. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, the no. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's weird. It says subscribe and send super chats to the podcast. So it weird. says <laughs> Sonic races through the green fields. The sun races through a blue sky filled with white clouds. The ways of his heart are much like the sun. Sonic runs and rests. The sun rises and sets. Don't give up on the sun. Don't make the sun laugh at you. That's the most chaotic one yet. Don't make it it's laugh like the, at the, you. The what sun the from Teletubbies. <laughs> The, the sun laughs at me whenever I just go outside, to be honest. It's like, ha, burn. That's why I don't go outside. <laughs> Up top. Heck right. yeah. Hi, Shovel. Anyway. Hi, Shovel. <laughs> if anyone gets that one, that's my deep cut. I song. guess. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. So, oh, yeah, okay. I like Hi, Shovel. What was the other one? Hi, Trowel. And it's like, I tried to replicate <laughs> Tails. Hi, Trowel. And Hi, Shovel. It didn't work out. Let us forget about this. I'm glad someone knows about Tails Gets Trolled. <laughs> Dude, I watched, like, the, like, a, like, a lecture about it on YouTube. Like, there were two lectures or something about it. I just know of the iconic art piece, but I've heard that the story does go places. It, it kind of pops off. I think literally right now, crazy. The, the current storyline, uh, Wile E. Coyote it's... is using, like, Nen-like abilities from Hunter x Hunter to use puppets to fight against, like, some anime character, and apparently it's really, really good, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know it was still going. It's still, well, you know, whenever, uh, you know, whenever, like true masterpieces, uh, it, you know, it comes out and when it can. <laughs> Speaking of uh, perfection. long ongoing masterpieces, though, eh? um, obviously not ongoing anymore. But uh, yeah, uh, since we've got two Archie experts here, I guess I should start off with a simple question. Sonic, Why? What kind of this other dude that's here dragged me into this? I was gonna say I'm kind of the murderer in this situation. <laughs> that's what it sounded like. You're the werewolf. From the intro. <laughs> well, ac actually, so low art. Uh, you obviously like played the games beforehand, but like for you, it was just like yeah, Sonic. You know, in the same way of like yeah, Mario. Yeah. The film. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Dude, what what I said I in the intro Mario. of like the longer video is pretty accurate, which is like the games. You know, they're fun. Whatever uh never really thought about the stories much and the story about having a friend um with like that sad i am box set with sally acorn is real i distinctly remember this childhood memory of being like what do you have here like what is this um this is, this is a sex are you sure you're show. supposed to have that <laughs> <laughs> are you sure man that's the same guy i borrowed uh paper mario the thousand year door to Let's and go. he had to give it back because his parents were like, you can't play this because they saw Mario like with the big cloud lady. And they were like, what the hell are you playing? 
<laughs> it's not okay. Okay. No, that's fair. I'm surprised they didn't change her design for the remake, but I guess people would have been outraged. Wait, what is this? I haven't played Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door. Look up, look up Flurry Paper Mario, you'll see. Okay, Paper Mario yeah. Flurry. Yeah. Well, well, I do. Uh, yeah, but uh, as far as, yeah, so that was kind of low arts upbringing, but for, for me, um, I just knew about Sonic since I was uh, just a little kid. Um, but I have, like, a weird palette of Sonic to grow up with because I grew up watching Sat AM in terms of, like, getting a DVD for it and watching that. And then the game that was relevant at the time when I discovered that was Sonic 06. And I distinctly remember, like, seeing the trailers awesome. and being like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, insane. Like, look at these graphics, these crazy cool characters, the music, obviously, just replaying his world over and over again. Mm -hmm. But then also during that, I was, you know, trying out the classics and things like that. And um, certain friends had different Sonic games. And so Sonic was kind of like this mystery to me where obviously I at that time I hadn't played too many games. So even just seeing the distinct styles of like adventure or writers or these things, it's like Sonic just kind of felt like this magical, weird world. Um, and I distinctly I distinctly have a memory of um, playing Shadow at a friend's house because he had it. And uh, and then I, I saved up some money and I was like, all right, mom you know when when you get off work can you go to GameStop and buy shadow and so she was like yeah sure so she went and the poor clerk you know bless his heart he was like oh man your son loves sonic here there's this thing called the sonic mega collection it has so many sonic games you could, you could get that for him instead and you have so many games to play and so she brings it home to me and because i am stupid i put the game in i start it i see the title screen i go through i'm just clicking x i, I don't n nothing's wrong here i play Sonic 3, I, I just click that one. I get all the way to Hydrocity, or Hydrocity, whichever one you prefer. And uh, it's Hydrocity. Uh, I get through that, and I get crushed by the, the wall or whatever, and I go, wait a minute, dot, dot, dot. This isn't Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, so my, my upbringing with Sonic is just, just <clears throat> random stuff. And to me, Sonic could just kind of be uh, anything. So when I randomly just discovered the Archie Sonic comics on uh, a rack at a store, um, and I opened it up, and, you know, I watched all the special features for Sonic Sat AM where they said, like, oh, like, uh, we were going to have a season three and blah, 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 blah. So I open up this comic, and this is, like, years later, and I'm like, what the heck? Snively's here? Sally Acorn? Mighty the Armadillo? Wait, it wasn't he on just, like, some picture? And, oh, Sonic's here? And why do they look so cool? And who's this monkey guy? And so I realized, I was like, oh, wow, the Archie Sonic comic, it, it's just doing what every, what I always did as a kid, which is I just wished all these different continuities could come together to create one cohesive world. And oh my gosh, there's like 200 of these things. So yeah, that's kind of where I fell in love with the series. Did you say that you got um? Did you say that you got Shadow the Hedgehog? Not Shadow the Sonic Mega Collection from a GameStop. I believe so. Yeah. Well, that's one game they fucking stopped then, isn't it? Because like, selling Mega Collection instead. What was kind of your reaction though to kind of receiving like the Mega they Collection instead of Shadow? Shadow? Because as a kid. I feel like if I saw the trailer for the one where the guy has a gun and a motorcycle and it's all in 3D, and I ended up with the retro collection, I want to make clear I do prefer the retro games now, but if I were a kid and I was seeing the dude with the gun, I'd be like, give, give, me, the, give me the one with the gun. Yeah, you know? it was like, the coolest thing ever, and my mom robbed me. She, she took away coolness. <laughs> so I, I, I would I say it's a joint it. responsibility bef between her and the, the game store yeah, uh, they clerk. they conspired against me to get me into cool stuff. And I hate them for it. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you ruined my life. Did you ever play I, I, Shadow I, in the end? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I legitimately, I went, I went to my mom and I was like, Mom, this is incorrect. Although I was probably way more bratty about it. Bless her soul. Uh, and so I, got, I eventually got Shadow. And uh, I thought it was a great time. I had a good, good time with it. I got all the, the cool little guns or whatever. And it was just, it was just a fun time. Um, the moral of the yeah. story is do not ever listen to Game Store, uh, Game Stop. <laughs> advisories <laughs> I mean, honestly i'm surprised he's even allowed to do that <laughs> don't buy this game buy this one instead <laughs> buy this one instead yeah oh boy but yeah and then you know the rest is history from there uh and then i guess as far as laura is concerned it's documented in the video uh i a random person back when he you know naked uh, woman he, dvd he was a he was a moldable person who had less subs i went to him as a random stranger and i said hey hey sir can I make a video on your channel? And he foolishly said yes. And uh, after I planted that seed <laughs> in his brain, two years later, I said, I legitimately, the, the message on that thing is real, where I was like, hey, do you remember how two years ago, going on three years, you told me that you would work on this project with me? Are you are you still up for it? And he, he responded. He was just like, yeah, I was just thinking about that. So it was fate, you know. Fate brings us together through Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> that rocks. 
That's adorable and a little bit uh, a little bit dubious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that would work anymore. I'd probably be a bit like, oh, I mean, well, I'm kind of busy. Or that I was like, sure, yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah, sure, like, random stranger. Um, Ian and just shows up at your part. doorstep with a copy of <laughs> the, the Archie collection. Just like, hi there, stranger. <laughs> I would like to be me? in your home with your possessions. The scariest part is that it literally just mimics how Ian Flynn got on the comic, which is that he was just in college, and then he was just like, shit, I need a job. So he's just like, hey, I like Sonic. Can I please work on it? And like, he didn't go oh. through any of the proper, he didn't go through any of the proper channels, but then because they were shifting I I over, because, yeah, because they were going through, shifting over through, through different things, they were like, you know what? Let's give this kid a chance. And uh, that's where we are. And we're so, also both an Indian. So if you want <laughs> now to become, he the game. If you want to become the most persuasive man in the world, change your name to Ian, basically. I guess so. I think so. Some people thought this is... that this Ian was Ian Flynn. That Ian <laughs> Flynn had come and told me to make videos on his comic. Dude. Like, I was getting multiple comments like that. I was like, no. No. <laughs> the Sonic... <laughs> the Sonic... I don't know. I almost said creator. That's not true. The, the Sonic man himself descends <laughs> from the Sonic plane to, I guess... to request you make a video. I guess it's the equivalent of, like, when, you know, like, if you had, like, a, a couple who said, like, oh, yeah, like, I saw her at a restaurant while she was working. I just asked her on a date, and we, we were just good from there. It's like, well, you probably shouldn't normally do that, but I'm glad it worked out. That's basically what I did. <laughs> I, just, I just said, hey, I'm some nobody. Want to work with me? And it worked out. So, <laughs> But don't do it, please. <laughs> I even just love the idea that he wasn't even interested in Sonic. Not particularly. I mean, I knew that all I knew about the comic was what people usually talk about with it is that it's weird, right? Um, it sure is. So, so I was like, oh, like, I'm sure talking about a weird thing could be fun. Um, Make money. Yeah, but it's a lot more interesting that it actually just becomes a really good story somehow. No, definitely. It's, it's weird. I always knew, like, before I watched the... Also, uh, for, for those who want to know, there, there is a nine-hour combined video... Uh, that that these guys are talking about. This is what we watched in preparation, and there are also more on top of that. I still need to watch the Shadow one because I'm actually really interested about Shadow. But uh, this video, what was I gonna say? Oh shit! <laughs> oh, you, 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 now you are the one with the dementia. Yeah, I'm getting the. Oh, I had a point. What was I talking about? Uh, damn. Oh, okay, no I know. Problem. Okay, so when I when I watched the video, I had only. Sorry, that was like a weird moment. Uh, when I watched the video, the only Archie I had read, I'd read the Mega Man Worlds Collide with Sonic, I'd read Worlds Unite, and I'd read the Silver Age from very late into Archie's runtime. Still the best origin story for Silver. Not gonna take any, like, butts against that. <laughs> but, uh, I always kinda knew that people liked the comic, right? Like, that was, like, one thing that people were always rallying for Sally, or, or just very excited to... Uh, talk about Archie and, like, wishing that it kept going or it had some kind of further representation. So starting with, like, like the the, the joke era and, like, a lot of the stuff that, you know, I, I personally, like, you know, when you were explaining it, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think I would have enjoyed this. Uh, I'm surprised that it, it went on to become something that I was extremely invested in only having watched this video. Like, I, I, I want to go read it now. Uh, after watching the video, because I, I feel like I will... I, I'm going to get something out of it. Like, the, the sincerity in that video uh, really spoke to me about it. Like, I can tell, like, you guys were definitely talking about it in, like, a, a way I... Like, I understood really well. It resonated. You know, oh, like, it, 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 it got felt me like a celebration I... of the subject matter more than just an analysis of yeah. it. Okay, I'm happy it, it was... came across, because a lot of it is, like, super negative but we we wanted it to be negative in a way that still feels like fun and clearly like yeah. overall we enjoy this thing no matter how much we get pissed off about it kind of for laughs in the video uh so it's good that yeah. it came across that way <laughs> it was very genuine and i i appreciate that like that's kind of it, it's sort of the way like i'm also very negative in a lot of sonic videos i've made because i care about the franchise so much but you know it comes off as me just being like a because so many of the games for so long, it was like, gosh, this is just, like, it's so pathetic, you know? And, and like, it's, it made me bitter. But it comes to things like Frontiers and Mania and other games that I do enjoy, and I feel like I 
try to get the sincerity out there as much as I can. And that's just something I really appreciate when I watch content like that. Just, like, knowing that, it, that this is not just something that... not It's not just made for the sake of it. Like, it was made because there was, like, actually a reason and, like, a desire to talk about these things that were enjoyed. It's a video oh, yeah, where you want to take some, like, positive away from it, you know, like... Yeah, that's the thing is like, and not in a negative way, like obviously if someone wants to go read those earlier issues, they can go for it. There's some cool stuff there. Yeah. Uh, but I just know a lot of people who I think <clears throat> would really enjoy like 160 onward never get there because there's all this other stuff. And sure, it's a nine hour video, but maybe some people will check that out and then go like, oh, I do want to read from 160 or just kind of skim through some of the issues and see what interests me, you know? Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. I mean, that that's the thing is, with Archie, it's so gargantuously, like, massive. And it is... It's so very fluid in how it's just changed so much over time. Like a lot of longer ongoing comic book series. But, like, <laughs> the, the thing is, there's not a lot of knowledge just openly available of where to actually start on this thing. And I remember, like, early last year, I was like, okay, I want to make it my mission to read Archie Sonic. Um... Because I'd read a lot of the IDW, hadn't read all of it, but I was like, I want to see what Archie Sonic's all about. I've always kind of been somewhat familiar with the Freedom Fighters uh, from, like, Sonic Sat AM. I didn't love them. Didn't love a lot of the kind of new Western lore that was kind of coming in in the 90s at the time. Because I was kind of more in the headspace of, I want this to be more like the games. But, of course, like, you grow older, and, like, as someone that's, you know... Someone who loves, like, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Frontiers, that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, I, I do like stuff that's a little bit more out there, so let's give the Archie comics a fair crack. And I remember when I started them in the very early Ian Gallagher run, it's, I, I, I kind of, as you said, it's a sincerely funny little comic, just, you know, a fun time. However, I was trying to binge read these, because I wanted oh, to get yeah, to... Oh, yeah, that's a mistake. <laughs> I wanted to get to where things get, like, interesting for better or for worse you know like it's like okay they, these are perfectly safe little funny pages things they got some little quips and stuff they're really doing their best to make this you know it, it feels like an underdog of comics even down to like that one cover where they're like hey we checked the other comics on the rack this is the one you want it's like they're trying to reach out and connect with this audience really hard and bless them i think they're succeeding i think they succeed just fine at what they're trying to do but binge reading those early Ian Gallagher Archie comics was just a sad experience for me. <laughs> just Oh yeah, I mean, it's funny that you say that because like, we did the same thing because we would read a group of chapters together and then talk about them as we went through all of the issues. And at the beginning, I was like, well, I want to make a video on this, so I want to read them quick. Like, I don't want to take a ton of time on this. So let's read them. And I think we read like 40 issues in a oh, yeah. week. And then we talked about it and I was like, why did I recommend, like, never again, man, never again. <laughs> like, I enjoyed it, but like, why did I do that? Clearly, this is not built for reading that many issues in a week. <laughs> yeah, my brain short circuited after about 12 issues. Um, but um, yeah, no, obviously things do get quite interesting once you get more around to the uh, Mecha Madness arc and Endgame. And I, I gotta say, like, that was the stuff I was looking forward to most was like how they would handle things like robo robotnik becoming the main dr robotnik that kind of stuff that was because... the coolest shit i've ever seen in my whole life <laughs> they legitimately yeah, I was such so interesting shocked. stuff with the canon but i honestly think that the robo robotnik idea is something they should keep in their back pocket for the movies if jim carrey doesn't come back for future installments like I i've been saying like they're probably gonna want to soft reboot it, maybe do something fully animated, but like keep it in continuity, have a robo robotnik, have him voiced by whoever you want. Um and, and uh, yeah, just just go forward with it, you know, fully animated, go for it. Like oh, Robo Robotnik was cool. Like that was awesome. The fact that they they changed like I I know they, they almost use that as like a way to segue the new design in as well. And to yeah. just get Robotnik back into the comic. But seeing, like, the, the modern Eggman design, pretty much, with those crazy robot powers and, like, roboticizing people with his bare hands, or gloved hands, rather, like, I was like, this is, this is the shit. This, this is, is what I was looking for. Just, like, like, the, like, the general posing, or just the expressions, oh, like, even, even when he's so not doing good. anything out of the ordinary. Um, once they get those, once they get those really good uh, artists, like Stephen Butler, James Fry, um, all of those guys because they came from comics, 
uh, especially Stephen Butler. Um, he, you know, he just knew the task, which is like, oh, just make it look cool. Sonic is cool. Okay. And so you look at, um, this is the thing I always uh, say about Archie, which is that, you know, the thing that we all can pretty much generally agree on with Sonic, whether you think he's cute or you like certain games, is that people like that he is cool. Even if you think he's more cute than cool, like if you like, you know, maybe Prime or something, people think Sonic is cool. Um, and I always just say, like, it, it's so shocking to me that the Sonic fan base will be so good faith for pretty much every aspect of the the franchise. But Archie really does feel like it's kind of stuck on its island. Obviously, you have, like, Underground, too, and those people have to fight for their lives for the things they enjoy, too. But, uh, but like, Archie especially, I'm like, Archie feels like it should be the most accessible in terms of just getting someone to think, oh, this looks really cool. Because the art for literally almost the whole comic outside of the, the, the It Doesn't Matter era is just consistently, like, excellent and not just like excellent as in like oh that looks pretty cool like no it's like the coolest sonic artwork i've ever seen um and so it just seems weird to me that uh or unfortunate i guess that those aren't the panels that get widely shared every month you know <laughs> you know um even you know even uh before the flynn era it just looks crazy and awesome so no definitely and yeah i thought like even like yeah in those very early books i was like the art is nice you know like they they still get the general sonic vibe down um, it's far from, like, Fleetway in terms of, like, going off model and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, something I did want to kind of, uh, discuss was kind of in the early days when they did do things like game adaptations. For example, they did, like, Sonic CD with the race between Metal and regular Sonic to save mm -hmm. Amy and stuff like that. And when they did, uh, it, it was the Angel Island storyline, where, like, Angel Island is something that can be, like, piloted by Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. Um, and one thing I kind of, uh, one thing I kind of stuck uh, stuck out to me was that these stories that they're adapting from the games, in the games, these are grand epics. Yet in the comics, they're comparatively small potatoes. In particular, like the Sonic Three adaptation, feels much yeah. smaller than it does in Sonic Three and Knuckles, which is probably one of the earliest instances of a Sonic game really feeling like an epic saga, you know? And yeah. so I remember being a bit disappointed by that when I did first check that out. Um, I, I think it's okay now, but, like, like what, what do you kind of think of, like, how they went about, like, adapting game stuff in those earlier issues? Yeah, uh, for me anyway, what I think is fascinating about Archie and why, uh, like, if anything, it has that Sonic spirit is that other than Robotnik, Sonic, and Tails, um, when it came out, uh, you know, those were the only characters that existed. And what I've always admired about the the Archie Sonic comic is it has, um, it's not that it doesn't respect the games. It just, it pairs, it, it does not see them as like gods. Like it does not see like, oh, Sonic 3 is coming out. Well, we have to spend so much time on this. Well, no, we, why, why would we spend a whole like arc on, you know, exploring this whatever thing when we want to tell jokes or we want to spend time with Sally or we got to find the king. Like we're doing our own stuff. So like when Shadow the Hedgehog shows up, right? He gets one issue where they do like Sonic getting arrested and they just say, go play. Essay too. That picture and of him in the tree is so funny. Like he yeah. looks like a like a lost child. Yeah, and so like the the comic just it, it is so determined to just do its own thing that now when when I read the comic, um, I don't look at it as like uh, you know, oh, this is you know they kind of undervalued uh Sonic Three. I'm not saying you're saying that, but just in terms of like when I read it, um, what I what I see it as is okay, this establishes to me the reader that knuckles as a character it's kind of underselling him in a way in the sense of like oh here's this kind of interesting little guy on his weird little island i wonder where that's going to go and if you know anything about the comics knuckles gets everything dedicated to him um and so it actually instead of being like oh wow we start off really big with knuckles it kind of feels like this slow burn where um because what we really liked about early knuckles is he's just kind of like this you know sincere little guy who is constantly kind of being thrown into these little situations but he has like an answer to it he figures it out really fast and you're just like okay that knuckles guy he, he's kind of he's he's a funny little guy and then I've, as it keeps growing and growing <laughs> so it, kinda, it reads more as like humble beginnings for knuckles rather than oh. like uh, uh and then you know obviously that gets paid off later uh because while we don't get an adaptation of sonic 3 for perhaps we get return to angel island in the post space era which is a giant four-part crazy extravaganza with just this giant war on angel island he goes super knuckles and he flies around and blows things up and he murders a man and all that stuff like there's just all <laughs> these all these crazy things going on so archie eventually does get to indulge in the game stuff once it's on its time and i just think that's really just cool and again it feels very sonic that it's just like no the the, the authority that is the games isn't going to tell me what to do i'm doing my own stuff it also so, makes a lot of yeah. sense um when you kind of put it that way because i remember kind of thinking 
I think the Fleetway comics did a better job with things like those early game adaptations, but at the same time, oh. the Fleetway comics were not anywhere near as committed to their own world building. Like, you didn't have characters like Sally Acorn and Antoine. You had fucking Porker Lewis, professional victim, you know? <laughs> like, well, and well, so... Early on. Eventually, it, it, it wrapped around into its own thing. But yeah, no, you're abs absolutely. Like, it was it was kind of playing it by ear, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, And, and then, yeah, like, there, there's something to be said about the tenacity of this comic that is based on a pre-established IP saying, no, our world building comes first. And it is so Art interesting because... A lot of Sonic fans these days will complain about fairly incongruent world building in the Sonic game universe. And they've been cleaning up a little bit with like the Tails tube and stuff like that. But in the past, it's been a complaint, yet a lot of those same people will still be like, yeah, Archie sucks. However, like the Archie stuff, considering like it does go through its own midlife crisis, it doesn't matter era, this yeah. is still also the same comic continuity that. They could have easily just, you know, when Sonic Adventure rolled around, been like, okay, we're pulling the plug on our universe. Sonic is now a much more defined thing, so we're just going to go ahead and reboot. Like, you know, we can do a Sonic Adventure adaptation. Amy is this young adult now and stuff like that. Uh, Station Square There's exists. Can I cut in about that real quick? I don't mean to, like, just the fact that, like... Elias was looking for that shit to save his mother's life, and Amy used the wish to just. Amy's the worst. Moment. That's irredeemable. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucking funny to me because, like, nowadays you see that in like, in like the Dragon Ball Super movies, like how Bulma's like, I need the Dragon Balls to make myself look a little younger, yeah. like a little bit younger, not too it's much. Dollar. And it, it, like, I just I remember seeing it like when you were like, I was like, is he gonna be pissed? Like, I'd be pissed. And he's like, well, I mean, I, I guess I can't really be mad at you. It's like, yes, you can. Well, <laughs> it she, is what it is, dude. Because Elias is the coolest guy ever, he goes, fine, I'll do it myself. And while everyone's fucking <laughs> no, off, I mean, I respect that, too. Run, he just fixes it. <laughs> it's, but that was so funny to me that, I, like, I didn't, I was like, why even bother explaining it? Just have her show up and pretend like nothing changed. You know, yeah. but like, yeah, like, like, they, 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 they needed characters. an explanation. <laughs> But that, yeah, that's like the thing, though, is that is a testament to how seriously they took their own world building, it like, is. to an almost yeah. stubborn degree, because <laughs> I, I don't think anyone would have questioned it if they were just like, this is who Amy is now, because that, that's the nature of the beast when it comes yeah, to fiction. They could have said, and, long time no see, Amy. Oh, and wow, you've really know, grown up, oh. Amy, you know, like, it doesn't matter if their ages aren't synchronized, fuck it, you know, it's Sonic. But, like, no, they, they were dead committed to... But then there's also the fact, like, Station Square is like an oh, underground yeah. society with an artificial That's sky. Cool. And, it, and it ties into our world and how we're actually, like, we've all been murdered and then our goop was turning yeah. into Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, as Charles Chab says, dead. the fact they even included an explanation for Pink Sally and Yellow Sally. Yeah, she oh, yeah. fell out of that chemicals. <laughs> There's so much about this comic that they do like that. Or like like even you were talking about Knuckles earlier and I was trying so hard to like not scream about how like like that one part where they're like, you know, we could really use Knuckles' help and he fucking was killed off screen. <laughs> and they're like, he's dead, Sonic, sorry. And I was like, Oh And then he saves everyone oh. from the quantum dial, which is like the coolest like thing I've ever heard of, and it's probably it's like some it, it's like some crisis on infinite earth shit. Yeah. Like <laughs> It's insane to it's me. So that they just they say Knuckles book. the Echidna has been killed off screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, capital D dead. <laughs> it's just like one thing like, short of having an evil twin. Oh wait. <laughs> oh wait, and he's I, I, oh, wait, we got to I have to stop it. I have to pause the video and be like, that is wild. Okay. No, it, it's <laughs> sorry. The, the, all right. It's, it's just cool. Like, uh, I mean, it's the thing we said near the end, which is that what's kind of at the end of that video is um, and it's kind of the the lifeblood of the comic, and why I think like once you read the Flynn era, you can go back and read the other stuff and and have a way better time because now it's not that you're reading the gag era and just going, okay, once it's gonna get good. Instead, if you read the Flynn era, then you go back and you go, oh, this is where this came from, and you're just, you can just kind of vibe with it. You know, it's basically like the weird history of the comic. But what I've always, again, respected about it is that even before Flynn came on, the writers, whenever the tones would shift or whatever, they would they would do what Flynn does, but just, you know, way less, which is that they would be like, oh, hey, we want to explain this joke that we had and we want to make it make sense. So the comic is kind of is constantly retconning itself and that just kind of becomes a nature of the beast. 
And so like when you have that, if you're if you're okay with that, if you're okay with a story that's just kind of um, you know, you go into it, you know, it's going to be a joke one minute, then a serious story. So that's telling you, oh, hey, so this isn't really like, uh, you know, it's kind of a warped perspective on the, the the what's actually probably happening. And then you get to kind of the end game era and it's really serious. And then you get to the middle section and they're just kind of doing whatever. But everything in the comic is canon. It's just each writer decides what parts of it are canon. And once you get to Flynn, it's like the final retcon. It's the final solidification of everything that happened. So Mecha Madness did happen, but uh knuckles probably didn't quote jemmy hendrix <laughs> you know <laughs> that kind of stuff and so that's why what not makes, that's what makes it really fascinating is that it's just constantly evolving and mutating to where it all somehow is cohesive even when it gets good it still feels like it's the same universe as where we started because even flynn's first issue was saying hey we're calling back to the gag era we're calling back to when we would use logos for gags we're calling back to like the goofy tone um, and it's just, again, it's just such a strange comic. Uh, and I, I just really love it for that. It's fascinating. So Something that's also quite fascinating is how that gag era kind of would go on to become the Sonic Boom Archie comic series as well, because they did like the logo gags in that too. Oh, oh yeah. do. That's right. So it kind of still lived on. It's, it is amazing though, like with like the death of like Archie and Boom, like how much of that Western Sonic mythology just completely collapsed and is just completely gone. Like... Yeah. I can see, like, it... having read much more of Archie recently, I can see why people are reeling from the end of this era and this line. I used to think, like, well, the IDW is basically the same thing, just without those new cast, you know, without without the Freedom Fighters. But it's like, no, oh, I, I, I do get it now. Um, I, I get, you know, why it matters. Yeah. Oh, sorry, um, yeah. Like, I, I do enjoy IDW. Like, I, I've read every issue so far. That's the kind of thing, like, I'm... I'm almost like rectifying that mistake of of not pursuing comics because it's like, oh, this new comic series we're starting at issue one. I can do that, you know. Like I can start at issue one. That's easy. So I've got it. Every issue digitally, I've got the silver cover where he's doing like the "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" meme <laughs> on my desk right behind me because I love that to death. And I've been enjoying it. I like the new characters. Metal Virus was fucking insane like that was that was wild but some of the like i i don't know i, I like i i never really thought like oh i'm gonna go back and read archie until i checked out like the video your video because like i, I don't know it, it's it, there's so much but now with that reading list that was in the description uh, it, it makes it a lot more uh digestible I, though i did send a picture to pup when i was looking through it that there's that one section that just has like a t uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch comic, and I was like, <laughs> "This this is like Archie was in crazy place. Like they, they were going back. Archie like was that. such a wild west in like Sonic like, history. Like so interesting. They had their own laws. They were a different country, and I love it for it. Like looking back, I, I did want to mention also though because we did mention earlier like the Robo Robotnik thing. Like, yeah, what was it like two years where Robotnik was dead? Yeah. And, two uh, whole years. Technically, he's still dead. Yeah, technically, he is still dead. <laughs> okay, two years without any Robotnik then, like... Yeah. That's yeah, no, um, Yeah, well, and the fact that uh, Sega specifically was like, yeah, you can kill our main character, but don't you dare touch Sally Acorn. She might do something one day, and then, you know, they didn't do anything, so... <laughs> it's so yeah, weird. Like, nah, like, we're gonna that, burn that Sonic Spinball or whatever, and that's it. So bizarre that that was Sega's mentality back then, whereas now they're like... We swear to God, the Freedom Fighters never existed. You were just imagining this. Um, <laughs> well, let me, but, um, if, for an, oh, yeah, go ahead, good, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry, I was just going to kind of say, I think something even Sega had issue with was when you don't have Robotnik in the fray, it is really hard to come up with good Sonic villains, and so often they just didn't stack up. Like, look at, look at the Tails video game where it's like, uh, okay, so yeah, Tails oh, has his own nemesis. What is it? It's a witch. Any any or other defining characters. characteristics? Oh, sorry, yeah, Wendy Witchcard. Yeah, Wendy Witchcard. And, and then, like, you know, like, when Robotnik well, was he's gone... He's actually Ixis Nagus' sister in the Archie comics, I believe. <laughs> and, and then, uh, yeah, like, when Robotnik was gone in the, in the comics, reboot, yeah. it was like, Ixis Nagus is now, like, Sonic's arch nemesis. The problem is, Robotnik is probably one of the most well-defined villains in video game history even if he yeah. was still kind of embryonic at that that uh, yeah let me try that again even if he was still a little embryonic at that time like it, he's still a very cool villain 
and I, I think too often it was like, okay, we need a new villain. What do we come out with? Wizard. Gotta be a wizard. No other defining traits. Just evil <laughs> wizard. Yeah. Or evil Sonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> evil Sonic thing is so funny because, like, I, I got a buddy um, who, when we went to see the Flash movie, he was talking about how stupid a lot of the Flash villain names are. I was like, okay, so Flash's arch nemesis, you got Reverse Flash, you got Dark Flash. I was like, oh, brother, wait until I tell you about <laughs> evil Sonic. <Godspeed. laughs> and then he becomes one of the best characters. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think yeah. it was possible. I remember... See, first impressions are the thing I think alienates a lot of prospective Archie fans, is because oh, these comics don't make a good first impression. Even even the good yeah. ones. When I first saw like Scourge, I was like, "Oh my god, he's got a leather jacket and he just said a Joker quote about one bad day. Stop it, stop it. You know what is this?" And also, obviously, I'd seen that page from the Sonic v Tails arc floating yeah. around where sonic is like the kid practically worships me he'll get over me putting his dad in jail and stuff like that and yeah. out of context that looks like the absolute antithesis to sonic like there's gonna be some sunset sea viewers that might remember there was an episode where i just said there is no context that can make that panel good here i am with a plate in front of me filled up with my own words and a knife and fork because, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I feel like an idiot Shut now up, having man. read that story. your words. Yeah, it's a fat Yeah, you see what I did. I see. I understand, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, and, and even just regardless of if you're a Sonic fan, it just looks like, oh, this is just some, like, cringe melodrama. Yeah. Um, which, obviously, the comic does have melodrama, but, like, it's good melodrama where you care about the characters and you want them to feel their feelings. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, even the, the Scourge quote. Um, so we actually released a Scourge video literally today. So if anyone's interested in that, go check that out. But uh, um, we talk about it in that video, which is that <laughs> what's so great about that Joker line is that what makes Scourge such a fascinating character is that he is leaning into the tropes of, like, your OC, who's like, I'm the coolest guy. I can beat Sonic and Shadow at once. That's literally the first thing he does. <laughs> is he fights Sonic and Shadow at the same time. But the comic treats him in the sense of it knows that he is a joke. And it gives him an existential crisis over the fact that he is just a knockoff of Sonic and he continuously tries to separate him from himself from that by going from evil Sonic to Scourge to, you know, doing all these different things until, you know, it culminates in whatever. But the, the moment that actually makes that flip in his head that he realizes that, oh, me just being called Scourge and being green and having my little jacket, that doesn't really make me any different from Sonic, is he goes, oh, Sonic, you know, you hate me, and then he quotes Joker. And so it's like, if you just see that, you're just like, wow, okay, Ian Flynn, I get you, you read comics. But no, the scene continues, literally two panels after that, Sonic kicks his foot out from under him, and he goes, are you a fucking idiot? The reason I hate you is because you're a big idiot nerd. What do I have to worry about you? The real reason you're a loser is because if you were just like even slightly nice, you'd be you'd be cool like me and i'm awesome and so that changes so scourge tries to pull a joker and sonic is so steadfast in who he is that it actually cripples all of scourge's like desire and, and his view of himself and so he has to then continue on and try to build off of that and try to discover himself and then you know that goes from there so just stuff like that where you just look at it and you're just like this is ridiculous like most things with uh, i think comics especially there's just so much more to it and flynn really just especially during preboot really seemed to treat the series when he came on as less of an action series and more of just like a character study for whoever he was working on at the time. The amount of depth and like just kind of emotion that you can pull out of characters like Knuckles dealing with um, an abusive parent or a loss of a loss of a parent or uh, Shadow dealing with the idea of uh, who he want, who he is told he needs to be versus who he wants to be and uh, whether that comes mm -hmm. in conflict with his morals. Just all these different things you can get out of these characters that so far, I've I've not found it anywhere else, and that's not me needing Sonic to be deep like that, or you know, deep quote unquote. But uh, uh like l looking into those things. But since it exists, heck yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it. It's wonderful. So well, that was the thing that was just such an interesting experience for me was when I started reading like the preboot uh, Flynn era, because obviously, yeah, like I, I mentioned, like that Sonic V Tails arc and stuff like that, and. It was one of those things where, yeah, as I was reading it, I was like, this has done something I did not anticipate. It sounds arrogant, but you don't pick up a Sonic comic expecting to be outsmarted by the comic. Like, I pick it up thinking, this is going to be ridiculous. And then I read it, I'm like, wow, you actually justified all of that. That's insane. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, like and it's that... pretty fair to some extent, because if you're 
coming into it as you would expect to. This is a thing you already like. You have some idea of who these characters are. Uh, if this was the game version, I imagine that wouldn't make much sense for yeah. him to be talking that way. You'd be like, what is this? Yeah, I was like, so what do you then... mean you hooked up with Fiona? What, what does that even yeah. mean? It should have been me. And then... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn's kind of asking you to like get invested in a comic that almost no one in their right mind, as far as I could imagine in my head, would like be fully invested in because like you have gag era. Maybe you like that. Okay, how many people who like Gagar are gonna like the Endgame stuff? Okay, how many people who like Endgame are gonna like the batshit stuff and so on and so forth? It keeps changing, uh, but he's like, no, we're gonna do all of it. It's all coming together. I also kind of recognized if you push through. I also kind of recognized my own hypocrisy as well, though, when reading it. It's time for an old Sunset City trope of pup references Zack Snyder when talking about Sonic. But like <laughs> I, I kind of remember the kind of sentiment I held with like Snyder's DC films is like they take themselves biblically seriously and I love them for it even though the rest of the world seems to think they don't have a right to do that. And it's like am I really going to go into Sonic and be like what's this Sonic thing trying to do a story about a, an uprising against the government and and fucking Sonic and Tails having to fallen out over a girl and all. Oh my god! And then I was like, "Oh, I'm such a hypocritical dick." When I read it, like, <laughs> I, I was I was thrilled though that I actually liked it. But the the other thing is, look, being British, when I hear about a guy defending a royal family, I immediately assume the worst. Um, but yeah, Elias is kind of a cool dude. I can kind of see why Sonic. Is, he, he's not even like pro royal necessarily. He's like, no, he's just... pro my friend, and fuck you yeah. if you're not pro my friend. Like that's Sonic. <laughs> yeah, but his kind of thing yeah, was also like, like, hey, hey, buddy, due like, process like, here, you know? Like, like let let him wait a little bit, and we'll figure this shit out. But it, it's just it's so good how like because there's been so much legitimately going on that would cause a miscommunication like this. I can actually believe that Sonic and Tails didn't communicate these things. It's something that Sonic Prime tried to do with Sonic and Nine was like, oh, in all the bluster of it, they forgot to communicate Ugh. parts of their plans. But Prime, the problem is, they have such ample opportunities to actually do that. Whereas Archie, I can actually believe that these guys didn't get the opportunity to actually sit down and talk, you know? It all, it all happens in, like, the span of 24 hours, like, their big blow-up. And people are dying. <laughs> yeah, well, and everything else is, like, passive, not passive-aggressive, but more of a, a miscommunication of, because for people who don't know, um, before Flynn came on, uh, so they're, they were doing some romance stuff, and so Tails the Fox, he loves this uh, girl named Fiona Fox, because he dated so a I. robot clone when she was a child. Uh, and so, <laughs> or when he was a child. Uh, yeah, so... That's really bad timing for me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> It's so shit. Just <laughs> ruining himself. <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> but yeah, they have these. They have the, these. Uh, they have all this stuff. And uh, what you know? So it, it's it. You, there's this whole scene where Son, where Tails sees this, and he's like, "I hate you." He says like in giant bold letters, and yeah, they, I hate you. It's that. It's that scene from uh, the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> I hate you. It's a reference well, like, to Sonic fans. Reference, yeah. And so, but in that story, um. Ken Penders is writing it, um, and so he he writes it to where like he loves melodrama. He's said so himself. He wants people talking. So the end of the scene is that Fiona goes, you know, Sonic's like, oh, I should talk to him, and Fiona's like, don't talk to him, Tails or Sonic. There is nothing you could ever say to him that would make this okay. And presumably, <laughs> Sonic just went okay because we never see them interact. And in fact, the end of yeah, that story, okay, <laughs> yeah. And so the end of that story is that yeah, all um, right. Sonic Sonic is walking away with Fiona, and Tails is crying. That is the, the to, for perspective, before Flynn came on the book, that is the last interaction they ever have in the comic, is him saying, I hate you, Sonic, and Sonic walking away with her, and he's crying on by a tree. So Flynn has to take this on into the story, and he could have just wrote it off, but instead he was like, okay, why would Sonic do that? What from his character would make that a thing? Well, what if he takes for granted the fact that, obviously he didn't mean to hurt Tails, but he takes for granted the fact that, oh, Tails actually looks up to me so much he must know that like it's cool and like when i see him we're acting cool but he's not thinking of it as like oh it's tails you know he looks up to me and he cares about me so he's not making a scene he takes it as see tails was just having a little bit of a fit he, it's okay he understands and then we move on from that and then we kind of build on this in other ways where sonic wants to it's not just about girls but instead sonic wants to he's a, he's very arrogant or whatever so he says things that people just kind of have to brush aside or whatever or when they're fighting eggman 
he wants to go fight Eggman alone. And Tails is telling him, like, dude, you're going to get killed. You're going to get yourself killed and everybody else killed. And Sonic is like, Tails, I will take care of it. And so, like, they end up having, like, a fight because Tails does not like when Sonic is basically not taking him seriously and not and not putting, uh, you know, not thinking these things through. And so when this culminates in their little battle, it therefore does it isn't about a girl. And uh, Tails even explicitly says this because so- Sonic is like, oh, is it just about Fiona? And he goes like, don't say it like that. It's like, I don't care if she didn't like me. I don't care if she went with Scourge. It's that you knew I liked her and you just went out with her and don't seem to care. And you don't care about this thing going on with my dad. You don't care about these other things. So you don't care about me, clearly. And so it, 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 it breaks down and Sonic gives this really interesting apology. And he contextualizes his arrogance and all these different things. And he has a, it's just, it's really great. And so by the end of it, you go, oh, wow. I really buy that this was a miscommunication. And two, you buy that, oh, now they're stronger together because Tails has kind of finally stood up to Sonic, not just for, you know, cucking him, as people say. There's literally a video. It's like, the time Sonic cucked Tails. And it's got like 900,000 views. Um, <laughs> it's like, I, I think that's, I think it's at like 700 or Total something. Total bro code like, violation though, right? Like. <laughs> And it's like, and it's like, well, no, that's not what that's not what this ends up being about. And in fact, it makes both characters feel stronger. Um, and so, yeah, it's just it's really fascinating how you can have all these different layers. But I'm sure some of the people listening to this are just like, why would I ever want to see that in a Sonic comic? And the answer to that is uh, there are two steps to getting into Archie. And uh, so it's actually, you know, it's a little hard, but we'll try it. All right. Step one, we look at Archie and we go, is this like the games? Well, shit, it's not. Ah, dang. It's not like the games. All right. Step two. If it's not like the games, do you, as a viewer, like good stories? If so, proceed. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not that hard. And I feel like a lot of people get really stuck on that first part where it's like, it's well, it's not like the thing I like, so it just can't be good at all. But it's like, but presumably you just like good stories. You like, the, you like uh, other interpretations of things. So, hey, give it a shot. I think you will really find something you will truly enjoy. There are so many characters in Archie that I think you could truly love. And I just feel like a lot of people kind of get stuck on that first part of like, well, it's not what I like. So it just kind of can't be good at all. And I think there's a lot to it. So another testament to me being a massive fucking hypocrite as well was me kind of saying like Sonic shouldn't do stories like this when uh, like, A, I've always resented the notion that Sonic doesn't have the right to tell a cool, serious, epic story. Like when people said like, you know, 06 takes itself too seriously. Like 06 taking itself seriously is not the problem with that story, in my opinion, anyways. And I think you can afford a little levity in there, but like in service of character, mm-hmm. of course. But I didn't like this notion that Sonic shouldn't fight Eldritch Abominations. Sonic shouldn't have these, you know, big stories that take their character seriously or treat them with any kind of dignity. I've always hated that sentiment. So the fact that I was kind of like carrying an extension of that into my Archie mentality gives me first-hand embarrassment but I- i'm i'm glad to be on the other side of it for definite you know like yeah. i think yeah, that's the thing the worst, dude that's the thing though is like if you were especially like washed by like the colors era of sonic storytelling like if you were someone that was like oh i hate that these characters aren't treated with dignity archie sonic is for you my guys like that like from like 160 onwards at the very least you know even down to like the fact that i think ian flynn like one of the best qualities about him is how much dignity he will treat even characters that people wouldn't really ordinarily care about with. Like, Mammoth Mogul, for example. Like, I ended up actually kind of being interested in Mammoth Mogul throughout his run of the Archie Sonic comics. Like, he's a yeah. he's a very good writer, Flynn. Like, you can say what you will about how he's handled characters. Like, I, I know one burning point of contention with Flynn is amy rose that is kind of taken away some of her sillier side and i can mm-hmm. agree with that we can't afford to have her be a little more fun than she is now but like the guy ultimately treats the characters with respect and that is so much more important to me than any kind of like pre-existing traits you know yeah well i mean it's a it's a thing that uh, i mean even when flynn came onto the book he he specifically said that uh they came to him and they said all right you have two options one you can you can just we can just start fresh man like we'll make this your run and you can start from zero basically and uh or you can continue on and he's like i absolutely want to continue on one i love the story um but two uh like you know he's like if i was a fan of these things like people are gonna be pissed at me if i if i just delete all their stuff um and so yeah like he he really did care about like i mean he gave tommy turtle one of the grandest send-offs in the entire comic literally atomized him to ash and memorialized him and it's like <laughs> you you come away from that being like Dude, oh. is Tommy Turtle kind of like 
cool. And <laughs> he disintegrated Sonic just like Nate well. Morgan. Sorry, go on, Dylan. He, he got disintegrated just like Nate Morgan, the unsung hero of the entire comic. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, you know what that means. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to, I had like a small PowerPoint that I wanted to share about one of the characters I learned about in this video that I, I don't know, I just thought, I thought he deserved better. Dylan, he does it have the music? It does have music. Yes! Oh, it's always my favorite oh, yes. part. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, we're ready right, I made this are. in like six minutes before the show started <laughs> So don't expect anything amazing. Ready when you are, Dylan, or? All right, hold on. That's that was like the perfect time to. I was like, oh, someone get disintegrated. Oh, perfect, perfect. Don't give it away. That... Don't spoil the fate of. Wait, know, who is this that Nate Morgan? Of... <laughs> who is he? The image of Tommy Turtle flying up into the air with his like gold armor and like nanites <laughs> and shit, and just being like, Tommy, no. Also, I thought like the whole Adam storyline was cool, and then Super it's Tails as... with a cape was awesome. Oh yeah. All right. Super... Turbo Tail, Super Captain Super Fox Man, the mutant cyborg clone. It's just awesome. <laughs> it's just cool. Like, all right. Okay. Right. Let's. Okay. I, I hit watch stream. Now. All right. H hang on. Wait. 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 Oh no! I, I hang on. Wait. Hang on. Hang on. I can do this. I can figure this out. <laughs> the father of <laughs> This is a big deal for you guys who don't know. Can they see it? They can't see it yet. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure this out. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There wow. we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. <laughs> the music too loud. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Holy <laughs> okay. oh, shit! Right. So, <laughs> so if you don't know Nate Morgan, he's a very important guy. He actually created rings in the Archie comic universe. Uh, and something very fucked up happens to him. <laughs> so this is just a little in remembrance post for Nate Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of silence. Look at him. I thought it was a fucking pimple on his eyebrow at first. <laughs> this is a gun. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't make me relive it. <laughs> the complete story of Nate Morgan abridged. <laughs> Sorry, it's like. Dylan, I have a question. <laughs> Nothing else? <laughs> I wasn't ready. Goodbye. <laughs> Morgani all. Yes. Nathaniel yeah. Morganyu! <laughs> that, oh, that is the face of a hero. Um, thank you. Ooh. Not many people remember his sacrifice. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was glorious. I know that this was like a last minute thing, but that was my favorite oh, PowerPoint party yet. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Dude. I don't mean to laugh so hard at the thing. I, I didn't realize the explosion sound was going to keep playing. It's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That was what made it for me. It just kept happening. <laughs> Thank you. That was way better oh, than man. our lecture. Because I miss him so much. Oh, oh boy. Oh god! Holy shit! All right, all right. So if you don't know, um, <laughs> this guy is a scientist, and uh, at one point he got roboticized. And Sonic, uh, he basically, there are nukes launched, and he he sends them into the place where this guy. This is Sonic's friend. He sends nukes into this place to try and nuke Eggman and Snively, and he just never talks about this guy again. <laughs> it was my favorite part of the entire video because, like, I it was like two nukes too. It's not even one nuke; it's like multiple nukes. So, like, that guy is atomized. He Sonic is Sonic wanted to make forever. sure that Nate was oh, dead. <laughs> it's so fucked. Oh, it's so funny. And there's the quote from the comic because I I put it in the video, yes. and people might think I made it up, but it's a real quote of like. What does a talking blue hedgehog, a two-tailed fox, and two nuclear armed warheads have in common? Read ahead to find out. <laughs> True blue uh, fan. That's, I think that was the moment where I went, I want to read these comics so bad. Well, that, like, that's just the to thing, see right? something like that. Everything you've heard about the comic is not only, like in terms of like how crazy it gets, is not only true, but there's also more. <laughs> 
Like, oh, I need to. Like, I just need to at this point. And I also think it's really interesting that, like, because like, before I watched the video, I didn't, like, rings have never been explained to me, except for Pup. He can talk about his theory, I because I think it's an interesting one. It's so much the tradition the at this point. Like, like, <laughs> the big cost of having yeah, guests every episode thing. is I have to explain fucking B theory every episode. <laughs> I don't want to even explain it anymore. Even I hate my own theory now. Do you want me to explain like... it? You explain it, Dill. Dylan. <clears throat> I, sorry, right. I know you hate that nickname. Well, I didn't even hear what you said. But, uh, so, basically, Pop's theory has been, it's called B-theory, because, you know, Sonic is, like, a big, like, fighter for, he's a freedom fighter for the environment, you know? He's, like, very against all the mechanization. And, in theory, that means the environment may also care for him and want to help him along. So Pup's theory is that there are these little photorealistic bees that will create these, like, rings of power to try and lead him towards his objective. And, you know, they try to help him that way. Which I think is neat. But also, Nate Morgan creating a <laughs> lake full of rings and then getting nuked twice I is mean, so good. You can also, like, you can tie these things in. You get my theory. I really appreciate that you actually understand the intention behind my theory as opposed to just going, lol, bees. But, like, the, the idea is they fly around in a little circle and a little ring comes out of their little bee butt. And, um... But, like, in the same way that humans manufacture honey, you could easily say that Nate Morgan, like, did the same for the Lake of Rings, right? Like, you could tie it in. Maybe, like maybe he had some bees? He, yeah, maybe he, maybe he was bees, a bee farmer. Yeah. You know, like maybe when the uh, maybe when the Zorda nuked us, uh, maybe it made the ring bees. Made bees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I must admit now that like Nate Morgan is very much embedded into my consciousness, I, I don't really care about bee theory anymore. Like, <laughs> no, no, don't <laughs> never let go of what you care about. No, I gotta let go of that because I care about Nate Morgan a lot more. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. So bad for Nate Morgan. He died for for. I guess Sonic. I want to ask he you. He died for no reason. Him. He did, and also Hope's grandma and dad. Sog never mentions it, them either. Yeah, he killed a lot of people. Like <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. This but is he pre. Threw those um, in there, just like as if there was no one else there. This is pre Ian it, Flynn, by the way, for the folks listening, because you've probably just heard. All of us saying like how great it is that Archie is committed to its world building, how how they <laughs> they treat the characters with dignity, and now we're talking about how Sonic like killed an innocent man in an act of nuclear he warfare. He killed a town full of people. We, we're, mean, not, <laughs> we're not roboticized. We're not saying so all like... of Archie is like <laughs> respectful well, of his and, characters. And, okay, and for like for for the one Archie fan in the comment, uh, I see you. We're friends. But I just want, I want to say that, you know, I'll be good faith here. Here's what actually happens, but, you know, is that Station Square shoots nukes at Eggman, and so Sonic has, like, five seconds to come up with a plan. And so he's like, okay, the idea is we're going to ask Eggman to shoot them down. Uh, and Eggman says, lol, die, idiot. And so Sonic decides, all right, we're going to trick him into thinking we fucked up his computer. So while he's trying to fix that, we will leave, and the nukes will make it inside. And then once he realizes, oh, shit, it works, he'll turn it on, and it'll be too late. And then, like, the nukes will be contained to there, and radioactive waste won't kill everyone on the planet. So, yes, Sonic didn't actually kill his friend, but he sure didn't consider his safety ones. Dude, <laughs> it might definitely... not be murder, but it sure as hell might be manslaughter. He's evaluated like, the risks, and he's willing to live with them. And by the way, I mean, this, I get... this is not even considering the fact that he does this with Tails, but it's not Tails, because Tails is out of the book for oh, two clone. years, because he's a fake... <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah that's that why died. he did it the clone tails was like kill your friends sonic kill it like whispering in the night kill them but j j just the fact that there's a version of tails this sweet innocent little boy that just dies he dies <laughs> he didn't deserve that even more either. so that it happens they take him during the the fucking high school arc like like the gag <laughs> high school arc he gets kidnapped by like space cosmic entities <laughs> he yeah, accepts like, his own death he literally gets kidnapped by, by Knuckles' stupid granddad. You are like four years old. What are you doing accepting death? <laughs> Way too young. That is no age to die. I'm telling you. And then even better is like they never mention it again. Like this never comes up until 
uh, Tails is like, oh, I'm going to give a recap to the audience about what happened. And so he goes, uh, they were like, oh, yeah. And then, like, you know, there was the fake Tails. And Tails doesn't even give a shit. He's just like, yeah, okay. Anyway, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> anyway, yeah, he fucking died. But his life was irrelevant because he's just a copy. I, I guess. That, that, that guy went through so much. Dude, in Prime, Sonic loves Tails copies. He's like, Nine, this isn't you! This, this isn't you, Nine! Uh, until it's Caveman Tails and Pirate Tails, in which case it's like, ah, fuck them. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, they can just die over. <laughs> oh, I don't know how to move on from that. <laughs> to be honest, that was like, that was, for lack of better words, a blast. Nate Morg. <laughs> <laughs> You tried so hard to find the word that when you pick something so simple. <laughs> Pup, I have a question. You said that you had some questions about the the making of these videos. So I didn't know if you had any of those. Yeah, like what what's That's uh, a good what's, place to go, yeah. What's up with that? That's uh, a great. <laughs> that was, great what's what's question, kind of like Bob, your you, you you two are very collaborative. Like how what's the production pipeline of these videos like? Uh, mainly, well, well, we'll, we read through it all together. Then we would talk about it. Uh, usually I am like more of the rough draft man. I'll just crap out a script really, really quick. Cause I don't care. I'll just write whatever. Okay. If it's bad, it's bad. Oh, it doesn't matter to me. So I'll write it all. Uh, and then Ian will do a pass through kind of to edit things down or reorganize things. And he, he cares more about the minutia stuff with this. And he also has even more of like an encyclopedic knowledge of the comic. So if I get something wrong, he'll know. Um, then it comes back to me. I'll do like another go through and sort of edit things up. And then we just send it back and forth like that over and over until we're both like, yeah, this is good. I'm happy with this. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was, and yeah, I, I was thinking like, it's the kind of video that no one brain could come up with <laughs> just because there's so many layers to it. The, the yeah, that's all our stupid bits came out, is that we would talk to each other, and I'd be like, yeah, this will be really funny, we're gonna sing about Dulcie the Dragon, but it'll be Frosty the Snowman, and he's like, yeah. sure, yeah! <laughs> and then we'll bring it back. And and well, I remember, yeah, I was just me. watching this, I was like, what do you mean this has musical numbers in it? Like... <laughs> oh yeah, well, Lowart's insane, and he is good at writing and creating music and living a healthy life, so he just makes this on the spot, and he's like, oh, I'll just like wreck that. Like, I'll just write like 40 minutes of music and just toss into the video, whatever. Incredible. Yeah. Just incredible. Yeah. Heck yeah. I like the music stuff. It's see, this is the problem right now. I feel like I've truly been sucked into the Sonic fan stuff. I'm making freaking fan music. Like, yeah, sorry, man. Something's <laughs> changed in me. The hog, you know, it, in fact, the hog all... got me. You, got the hog. you hog grabbed the hog by the reins. <laughs> Not, and he won't <laughs> let go and I won't let go. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the, they're really fun. I mean, the, the process of actually making them is just extremely just fun. Um, just because like, it's just, it's just great to just basically what we call like every day and just, you know, be like, oh, let's talk about like this thing or what we want to do with this. And, uh, like I said, like he said, I really care about like the minutia. Um, like to me, like my problem with making videos is I just always get stuck. I can't write the bad first draft. It has to be good on the first try. And so oh, I, I know a lot of people that get stuck yeah. in that mm -hmm. position. Yeah. And so Laura, it's great. Because he doesn't give a crap. He went to college and he learned to not do that. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so he just he just writes out. Um, I went to you know, college his, for Sonic. I went to college, and he yeah he just writes out, uh, you know something like that. And so I it takes all the pressure off me, and I really appreciate it because then <clears throat> I can just kind of go in and put all the ideas I want to say, and then he kind of does all the setup for me, and then he goes in because now that I've made points, um, it kind of. To me, it kind of sometimes feels very competitive, like in a good way, where I'll write something and then he'll be like, oh, actually, that reminds me of this thing I really want to talk about. And I'm like, crap, wait, I need to also mention my thing I want to talk about. <laughs> so it kind of just brings out the the best in the, the script writing process. We've only we've literally only had like one occasion where we genuinely like disagreed on something. And it wasn't even like whether to put something in. It was <laughs> is, it, it, is it the top five hottest sallies. No, we were unanimous. That was oh, a big party. agreement there. I've never agreed more okay. with anything in my life. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> um, we the disagreement was when Sonic, when Sally slaps Sonic, uh, is it in character or is it out of character? And we both disagreed on that, so we just settled for the in between, which is uh, if it is out of character, it doesn't matter because I don't care about her and she's uh, poorly like implemented. So maybe <laughs> it is in character because she's not well characterized. And so there was our happy. That was literally the only time where we were like, like we were just like, huh? But I really want to 
make this point. He's like, I, I don't know. I just don't think that. Everything else, we've pretty much been on the same page. So it's really smooth and uh, just a blast. I made One a friend thing, out of um, it. Heck yeah. I mean, would you it's say beautiful. that Sally is never characterized well? Or do you, do you think it's just in that kind of part of the run, I guess? Oh, yeah. It's in that part of the run. Uh, she's my second favorite Sonic character. So uh, I say it would be a very surprising take. No, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, like, we used to have this host on here, Nick, Game Apologist, don't know if you've heard of him, probably have, but um, he, he loves him some Archie Sonic, he's got a huge boner for Sally Acorn, uh, not even uh, hyperbolizing there, but, um, like, <laughs> yeah, something that he kind of brought up in his video about, like, why Sally matters is kind of, like, how Sally represents a healthy depiction of kind of like a relationship in a Sonic story and how kind of that tender dynamic between her and Sonic is incredibly sincere. It's handled really well. And yeah, I, I agree with that. And also, yeah, when I was reading like, you know, the pre-boot Flynn era, like kind of how they uh, re... Uh, what, what, what do they do? They reconnect. Uh, I had <laughs> recongeal in my head for a second there, but yeah, they reconnect. Um, yeah, well... Yeah, it's ahead, in such a good spirited way, you know. Like I, I really like how that was handled, and it's kind of a shame that like post reboot they didn't really kind of, you know, acknowledge that they were together in the first place. But no. like at the same time, I understand they're working with mandates from Sega. Sonic oh. can't get into relationships, this, that, and the other. But yeah, no, I, I really did enjoy Sally as a character. She is a non presence for quite a lot of Archie, unfortunately, though. But like, yeah. That's that's what we mean when we say like by the time she slaps sonic it's like well who are you you know yeah like they're they, well and, and that's why um we wanted to actually uh, i'm really proud of how this section came out um is that the end of the the video of the nine hour you know video kind of reveals that this was actually uh more or less uh, at least that last section was more or less a sally video all along because her she is the kind of breaking point of when the comic gets like really bad but then what um we kind of end on is that sally isn't a story about like uh oh now she she realizes how to be a good girlfriend to sonic um her whole story is actually about her pulling herself out of the mud that all the writers previously had put her through and by the end when she's standing next to sonic it isn't that um like oh man she finally earned sonic's friendship it's that she goes you know what i am tired of living like this i am going to be competent and like good natured and do what i want to do for me and so she cuts her hair and she does all that stuff and that you know, obviously, um, she's rekindled some stuff with Sonic and, and all those things. But that is why Sally becomes such a, a great character, because her self betterment, her, her desire to, to basically forgive herself is all towards that. It is for her to be happy with herself. And uh, we're going to make a video about her. But there's just so much they explore with that that I just think is just really wonderful. And, um, and yeah, they, they go places with that her. conclusion. They, they, they go places with her romance that um, I'll talk a little bit about here, which is that um, by the time that she decides, because, you know, it, Flynn could have, he could have went the route of um, mm -hmm. Sally then, you know, we don't need to do any of that romance stuff. She's an independent woman. She's fine. But no, romance was always a part of Sally. That's a very integral part of her character. She loves Sonic or she she wants to have a romantic relationship um, while she is a leader and all these things. And so the comic, instead of making it about um, Sonic and Jeffrey St. John fighting for their affection of their prize and making them the focus, the whole story, whenever uh, we actually do get more stuff with um, Sally Acorn, is that um, it is all entirely dependent on what does she want from a relationship. And we actually explore that. And by the end of it, when um, she decides to date Sonic again, it is not like, oh, she finally goes back to Sonic. It's that she now realizes, okay, I'm in a healthy place where I would like to be in a relationship with the person I love. <laughs> and it's it's really strong, and it culminates in one of the most like emotional moments in the entire story. It's like a Disney moment where literally, like I won't spoil anything, but literally the idea of Sonic and Sally loving each other saves all of time and space. That's all I'll say. And that's like, it's so grand and so like epic and stuff. And it's just a story that I want people to to hear about. And so that's kind of, that's always been the the point of making these videos is I wanted to talk about the Flynn era, but I said, how am I going to explain any of this to anyone? Well, low art's crazy enough to do it. Let's talk about all of it. And then now we're at the point where we're making these individual character videos because now you, you know the, what the context is. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful comic. I really love it. It also kind of takes me back to, um, when I was on a journey uh, to California with uh, Nick, we were having a little chat in the car because it's something that like Nick can be a little torn up about is the fact that the Freedom Fighters don't get any acknowledgement or anything in any kind of modern Sonic media now. Uh, any, you know, media that comes out mm -hmm. post-Archie. And I, I kind of remember saying, like, 
Is there an obligation for them to recognize those characters, though, given that Sonic is ultimately the property of the Japanese Sonic team and stuff like that? Is there an obligation for them to fold in that Western media? Or even if there's an obligation, how much does it really matter? And I, I remember thinking at the time, my, my thought process was, like, Antoine de Coulette... Uh, my only knowledge of this guy was really, at that time, from the Sad AM series. And my first thought whenever I saw Anton de Coulette was, why the fuck is there a French hamster in this Sonic show? <laughs> um, and I kind of thought the same about a lot of, like, that Western Sonic media. I never liked Not Hole. I was like, this is not where... Sonic would not live in a woodland with critters and elves and shit. Not. The dude would live by the seaside or some shit. He'd live in fucking lush Cali. But, like... He hates the water, though. He hates water, but he likes being by it, you know? <laughs> like You can like the beach and not want to It's like my drown. cat, dude. I, I, I think like Station <laughs> Square. Station Square, hanging out by the pool with a bunch of anime polygonal <laughs> babes. That That's kind of my Sonic. But it was one of those things where when I was reading, like, issue 60, issue 60? Fuck me. Issue 160 onwards, um, we had like the bit where like Robotnik destroys kind of the original knot hole and uh, Nicole creates like a digitized version of it and uh, I, I got to know more about like Elias and the monarchy and how they're, they're not a piece of shit monarchy like real monarchies. They're actually like a decent family of people and stuff. Um, and oh, then like... there was the issue where <laughs> Anton and Bunny got married and I was like, Oh man, the, the, they've Antoine, you've come such a long way. I still find it really <laughs> hilarious how you're written with a French accent in these pages, but like, you've come so far, buddy. And j I, I really liked Bunny as well in this. And I, yeah. I was like, shit, man, these characters matter. They, they do matter. Like, e even, <laughs> even if Sega of Japan do not have an obligation to include them, they should. Like, I'm not saying they must, but they should. Because these characters, to generations of people in different territories, that is what defines Sonic for people. And with the assertion that this never happened, that these characters can never get any recognition, be it in the games or be it in the merchandise, they can't even have, like, a little side story in the comics or anything like that. Like, that that's just rough. That's just really rough because you're effectively denying people the Sonic that they grew up with. Sega are so utterly fixated on the idea that Sonic was everyone's childhood. It's why, you know, so much of the merchandising, so much of the branding now leads into, like, the classic end of the brand. It's like, it's a nostalgic thing. But Sonic is a nostalgic thing for people in so many more ways. For some people, it's the Freedom Fighters that are nostalgic. And while I don't think, like, the games or the main universe necessarily needs to incorporate them, be cool if they did, but I don't think they have to. You could at least have, like, a t-shirt or something. Or a poster or yeah, a jigsaw me, puzzle. At the very least. For me, it's I, one I of those. I gotta say, though, like, I, I have not... Sorry. I, oh, no, I, no, you can go for it. I really didn't, didn't know too much about the Freedom Fighters. I just knew that people were very invested in them and i never really saw why i was like oh they just seem like characters that you could replace with other characters but like it's it's silly to say that because like if i if i was looking at certain characters like from the main continuity or from whatever and they just replaced them out of nowhere i'd be like hey man i like those characters and that's kind of when it like clicked like when i was watching the video i was like okay that's stupid of me like that's my own hypocrite moment like pup was saying I yeah. think to a certain extent, I, I, I think they're a lot it, cooler like, than I gave them credit for. Yeah, I like the and maybe this is because I'm not as much into like the games and the stories of the games and stuff. But to me, it's like I enjoyed those characters there. I'd only really want hmm. someone to use them if they had like a new cool idea with them. Um, and fortunately, as usual, the Sonic fans are insane and crazy. So now there's like that group team season three, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah like so they're, they're doing stuff with that. them. Like it's cool. So. You know, at least there's there's other people who want to do stuff with them if, if they're yeah. passionate about that. Yeah. Or like the, I'm glad the Sega move. doesn't like kill that like Nintendo would. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and there's the uh, villain fan film, which is going to have Scourge in it as one of the villains. And uh, they did a really good job with his trailer. Like, it, it's perfect. Uh, oh, his uh, trailer was so cool. Like, what the yeah. heck? Yeah, so like... Yeah, like uh, Spider-Verse meets Sonic. What a cool idea. Yeah, but yeah, and with the villains, which is so fun. But uh, but yeah, no, and um, I mean that's what I always say is like, yeah, I don't, 
Sega doesn't have to do, they can do whatever they want. They're already struggling enough to make Frontiers playable. So, you know, they don't. <laughs> have uh, but, <laughs> but it was good, though. It was, it, like it, it might too. have been a college project, but it was good. It is fun. I mean, I'm with you, Pup, where it's fun to play, but like you can see all the, the, the uh, paper clips that used to hold it together. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's completely <laughs> oh, yeah. fair. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, but like, they can do whatever they want. Um, fans are always going to keep it in mind. But to me, like, uh, as as mentioned, these characters were around for a very long time. They were around for, what is it, 24 years? So, like, um, well, yeah, because they the comic got canceled in 2017. So, like, Sally Acorn was relevant and, like, getting material up to when Frontier or Forces came out. So, like, like think about that, you know? Um, so, like, these characters have been around and, and kicking and telling stories the, whole, the entire time. So, I think, like, there should be maybe something. I, to me, I would want merchandise. I think that's just kind of the easy thing to do. Um, they're never going to probably be, like, the, the context in which the the characters in Archie are good is because of, like, the stories that are around it. Like, Sally, I wouldn't want to introduce her into the story to just be a leader. Because that's not what I like about Sally. I don't like Sally just because she's a leader character. I like her because she's a story about a young woman trying to fix her life and forgive herself. That's what makes her a wonderful character. Or, you know, you can't just throw in Scourge half, uh, you know, willy-nilly because then you lose the soul of Scourge, which is that he's a sonic recolor having an existential crisis. And what does that mean for him? And how does he devolve and ruin everything around him? Um, so, like, you, you know, I wouldn't want them just tossed in kind of like Lowart said. But you can acknowledge them. Um, you can show, you know, you can make merchandise for them. But ultimately, the biggest thing I always just think of is I just want more people to know about them. And that's why we made these videos and why I'm I'm really glad they, they've done so well. Because now l people like you are, are able to basically fall in love with these characters who've existed the whole time. And now you get to know them. You get to know what a Mina Mongoose is or a Prince Elias or, uh, you know, a Mammoth Mogul or all these different characters. If the Sonic know... games were Hot Chick Heaven, the comics are like, I mean, what, what what's above <laughs> heaven? The comics are like heaven's heaven. You got fucking, uh, oh, what's the name of that red echidna? This, that's all <laughs> it is, right? I think that's that's, isn't that get. the point? That's it's the woman. point, isn't it? It's just heaven. <laughs> but yeah, it's a no, huge Walmart. It's porn. Read it. It's a huge Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember reading the fucking um, the Scourge in jail issues and just thinking, <laughs> he and Fiona share a cell. They, they, if he's not, he's missing a trick if he's not taking advantage of this situation. Uh, she loves him back. When I say taking Very advantage awesome. of the situation, I mean if if he's not, you know, yeah, gaining he, he didn't mean anything horrible. Love, I, just, I worded that, that horrendously, all right? <laughs> that was I like the people in the chat here just putting statement. Leon Da, too. Leon, Leon, Leon Da. Da, yeah. Oh, oh my god, Leon Da. Da. Talk about any of the Knuckles stuff. What do you, okay, I want to ask you guys questions. Okay. I think I might have talked over your question. What do you think? What, of what, Knuckles? Of just, like, the I, Knuckles lore. <laughs> dude, just how that was the part that I had... Like, I, I had... No, I, I didn't have trouble watching the video at that part, but I was, like... I, I was having trouble understanding... Go on. ...much insanely mature concepts in the knuckles section that i was yeah. like this is a comic that's geared towards like i wouldn't say like children children but like you know younger people you it's know a comic and that probably should be geared toward children but just refuses to be it, it's it's <laughs> so interesting to me that they tackled so many mature topics in the knuckles section and i i, I was kind of like what on earth like, and, and the fact that, like, a lot of it, like, you were talking about Knuckles kind of gets sidelined as well in favor of talking about other characters and stuff. It, it's very interesting to me that he becomes so important when the comic itself was not really giving me the impression that they thought so. Like, it sort of, like, just pops up after a while. It's like, yes, you are literally Jesus. Like, <laughs> like the sonic equivalent of Jesus. And... Uh, I, I was kind of blown away. Like, I don't really know if I want to read the Knuckles stuff. But well, I got a lecture for you for that, man. That's what uh, the video is for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, I that's that why we sometime. also made a lecture on it, because it's just so much stuff. I, I think I should watch that. Well, my own like, thoughts. It's, it's so interesting. On like that is... Knuckles' girlfriend don't wear any pants. It's true. She I doesn't need them. About time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> Pop, did you watch the uh, the the Why Archie Knuckles is the best Knuckles video that I sent you? Unfortunately, I haven't got around to the Knuckles one yet. Okay, and you I'm haven't sorry. seen that either, uh, Dylan, right? What was that? Uh, the we we so obviously there's a big video, but we have a video called Why Archie Knuckles is the best Knuckles. Um, I haven't I seen that one yet, but I probably should. I definitely would recommend that because that is where you will finally get your reward for all the shit you just sat through. <laughs> unless you just want to read the comic too. Yeah. And, if, unless you already have. Yeah. Well, see, I haven't. I, I, I do want to... I, I don't know. Was I, like I think green. I do want to go back and read stuff. He was like green he, when he was, was green born. Bit, yeah. And like he had like a strong resemblance to like Dr. Finitivus. And I also find it interesting how many like sort of... There, there are definitely weird parallels between... I mean, maybe this isn't the best example, but there are definitely some weird parallels between Archie and IDW in some ways. Dr. Finitivus, for some reason, reminds me a bit of Dr. Starline. It might just be because he's called Doctor, but, like... Um, the color is the same, and they have, like, portal... Yeah, Dude, they have there's... the same first name, Doctor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also... Am I pronouncing that right? Is he called Finitivus or Finitivus? You can like... call it whatever you want. It's not a real word. I checked into it. <laughs> yeah, I, I doubt there's ever been, like, a Okay, I'm gonna like call him Dr. Finn, then. Well, anyways, yeah, like, Dr. Finn's relation to the Archie stuff. His design is awesome, by the way. Like, Dr. Finn oh, he... looks great. Um, but, I mean, one. kind of linking back a little bit to kind of what we were saying about, like, whether or not Archie characters should be included in Sonic Mythology... I think one instance, though, where it is kind of screaming for them to kind of come back is some of those, some of the IDW stories where you've got, like, Resistance and stuff like that. And they're putting Amy into kind of a role that is more akin to Sally and stuff like that. That is something that I think tends to happen these days. I think I would rather they actually just use the real deal than try to retrofit the main, you know, Japanese cast into kind of being the Freedom Fighters light in a way, you know? Like... I, I I don't want them turning Amy into Sally. I want them to put Sally in if they want to put Sally in, basically. Okay. Someone in the comments, sorry, not the comments, someone in the chat said, and this is something I, for some reason, had in my brain as well, but uh, Finitivus and and Starline were both based on the Wecknia glitch. Yeah. So that, that I think it's that glitch where Knuckles is, like, white or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of cool. Oh. So that's why maybe there's a parallel there. Yeah, I'd say so. Well, and also you literally have a, uh, like, I remember I was talking to my friend and uh, he was reading through IDW and I was like, uh, and he's like, man, I miss Archie. And I'm like, haha, yeah, uh, you know, I miss because he loves Scourge. And I was like, yeah, now I was like, now we have, uh, now we have another green rival who moves really fast and, you know, Surge, uh, yeah. and then I said his name Surge. And then I said it out loud and I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> wait a second. And, I, and I, by the way, I don't mean to say they're the same character, just more in terms of like similar concepts that people can latch on yeah. to. They clearly of kind of, like, yeah, they're doing like Surge because interesting. there's a desire to kind of fulfill that kind of void that Surge. See, I'm getting the names mixed up. Scourge <laughs> has left in a way. Dude, for um, a long time, I thought his name was Scourge because that's how it spells and people made fun of me in my comments. That would be funny if he went around being like, I'm Scourge the Hedgehog. It's like, dude, you're I'm really large. <laughs> I'm Scourge, I'm gonna push you into this gorge. I'm gonna scorch ya. Yeah. <laughs> He's a warm fella. He shows up and he scourges all over the place. <laughs> he does do that a lot. There's a reason why he wears that Guy Fieri leather jacket. That's you know what? That's badass, I gotta say. His design, even though he's just green makes Sonic, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ah oh, boy. Man, Archie's cool. It is cool. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there any? I mean, is there any other topics you wanted to, to cover specifically? Can we talk about um, some characterization? I want to. I do want to talk about Shadow, but first sure. I want to talk about Sonic and why okay. Archie Sonic is the best Sonic because I think Archie Sonic very much appeals to the Western sensibilities when it comes to Sonic. It's something I've done a video myself on about like how the West and the East have both kind of informed the character of Sonic and how they've both taken things in different direction where, like, you know, Japanese Sonic, there's quite a bit of mystique to him. You don't really know that much about who he is, all things considered. But, like, you know, he's he's like the wind, you know? <laughs> like, um, where there's more humanity to USA interpretations. This carries across from Archie Sonic, who, you know, he, he's a Sonic that can get stressed out. He's a Sonic where people can get under his skin. And it also carries over to Boom, because Boom Sonic is also a much more humanized depiction, even if he is more in line with comedy. 
movie Sonic, also a bit more human. Uh, a lot of people don't like uh, Prime Sonic because he's a guy that seems to bumble his way through mistakes and stuff. But again, that is a more inherently westernized take on Sonic. It just seems that American writers prefer a more humanized version of Sonic. And yeah, I saw your video on why Archie Sonic is best Sonic. And yeah, how kind of like the events of uh, the story, you know, things like losing Tommy Turtle and stuff got so under Sonic's skin that, you know, it even led to a point where like Silver thought that Antoine was going to be a danger, but he was in fucking hospital and Sonic just drags him by his quills. Like, look, what what, what threat is he posing, you know? Like that shit, that was like, that is such a, like, I know there's a lot of moments where Archie Sonic shows emotion, and I do, I like that a lot. That that point where he's like, I'm coming so close to beating the shit out of this guy. He's, just he for, like, a, being an annoying dumbass. He makes a death threat. It's, like, an unironic death does. threat. Yeah, to the I Team Babylon, isn't it? Yeah, he says, uh, because he, he specifically says, he's like, if I, he's like, if I was not the good guy, which, uh-oh, <laughs> if I was not the good guy, I would make <laughs> sure that you can't escape this falling building. Uh, but hey, if anyone is hurt, you'd better hope you can run faster than me. Now, the second part is just, you know, I could beat the shit out of you. But the first part is him just saying, I would like to leave you for dead yeah. and watch you fall down this building. But I won't. You know what? Enforces I'm, Sonic the, actually does. Sonic make makes a death, death threat, threat enforces. I was about to mention that. Yes. He does do that. During the oh, is like, oh. yeah. What do you it's want just, your epitaph to read? And he goes, oh, why don't we make it for the person who needs it? Yeah, here he lies the masked clown. It. Save it for someone who actually needs one. I was like, how the fuck did that come from the Sonic Forces script? Because that's that was, raw. That was raw. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But for sure. Well, and obviously Sonic just has killed people in the games. Um, oh the yeah. Inter the interesting. Killed the Deadly Six. I'm pretty sure. It, it well, gets and, better. In he kills King Arthur. In, in the Japanese version of Sonic Forces, he says, "Here lies the masked prick" instead of the masked clown. That's even <laughs> better. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, that no, the. But for the uh, for the audience, I just want to clarify: it's not a matter of like, oh wow, it's really unique that Sonic can like kill someone or, or have these Nate moments Morgan. of like you know snark. It's just more of it's fascinating what? how the comic decides to like dive into that and make it like less of like, oh Sonic's really cool or holy shit Sonic's really pissed. It's like I think Sonic is like like not okay right now. Like he's not doing well, mm. you yeah. know. And uh, it paints it in a really hu like it paints it in a very human way. It doesn't paint it in the sense of like a really like cool moment or like oh like that's kind of our, our edgy moment. It paints it in a way of like like Sonic, do you do you need to like talk to someone? <laughs> like, need to lie down. Right? Yeah. See, I personally, He's yeah, I do prefer a more westernized Sonic. I personally think the two can go hand in hand. Of like Japanese Sonic, the mystique of it all, the how he's kind of you know an uncompromising guy that always does the right thing. I kind of like to think that that's kind of Sonic's looking glass self, who he wants to be, versus who he actually is, who is someone who is still breakable. He has a breaking point. He has limits. He has his own mental health and stuff like that. But, mm. you know, like, it, it's not always on the surface. And when it does come to the surface, you take seriously what he's going through, or you, you take seriously what he's up against, you know? Like, I, I love that about Archie yeah. Sonic. And it kind of made it's me... It's not something that comes easy. You know, yeah. like, it's, it's, you see he's got to be pushed really far before something like that comes out of his mouth, and then that makes me not look at it and go, <laughs> Blue Hedgehog, kill guy. You know, like, I'm, I'm not, like, laughing about it. Whoa, it's Nate like, Morgan's wow, he's... dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, he didn't care about that. But... Uh, he gives up for a second, like, uh, when he, like, yeah. dis basically, like, disbands the Freedom Fighters, um, and he has to be, he kind of has to be pulled out of it just by the fact that he still has friends fighting for him because uh because yeah like he i think he he literally tells him he's like because uh yeah tails is like hey you know things are pretty bad what should we do and sonic's like dude pretty bad we like lost <laughs> eggman won yeah. and it's like oh my gosh you know i i love that kind of stuff so much though because like the notion that sonic would go through that and be completely unaffected by it i understand that sonic is meant to be a pretty unbreakable dude but there comes a point where it's just like, are we even writing a character anymore? Or is this guy just... Mm. Like, I, I know static characters are a thing, but it, the, the clue's still in the word character, you know? Is, is he a static character or is he a static thing, you know? <laughs> like, Well, and usually, usually what it comes down to is it's less about, like, you can't make a character like that work or, like, can't work for Brutal Long. It's just I think they're writing stories where that, like, that character shouldn't be there and or... Uh, like, not like you can't tell those stories, but more so they're not using other characters to uh, 
explore what you would naturally want to explore. Instead, Sonic just is kind of there. Um, but what we know from, you know, the best of Sonic stories from the games like Black Knight is that you can actually do that very aspirational hero that he is where um, Sonic is a character you want to be like um, and he changes the people around him. Um, but the way you do that is you do it by kind of telling a story around him and he's going to be consistent. But I feel like a lot of times the worst of those stories are when they spend too much time on it, like they dwell on it for too long to where you're like, oh, hey, Sonic, you're here right now. Can you please have any other emotion? Whereas yeah. I think the best of those stories know to use Sonic sparingly because the emotional range he is going to go for needs to be consistent and it needs to be there to punctuate why it's important he's there. Um, if anyone's ever read One Piece, this is what Luffy is. Uh, the, mm. the, the creator has literally said he has to write scenarios where Luffy is out of the story. And sometimes you can really tell and it's really funny. But he has to oh, write yeah. stories. He has to write a situation where Luffy is out of the story because if Luffy just shows up, he will stop the story because he is very to the point. He knows what he believes in and he's very consistent. It's like so how Sonic X also mitigates that by not actually having the show be about Sonic as such. Yeah. And so you have to have and so you have to be a really good writer for your other characters to where when Luffy isn't around in One Piece or, you know, in Sonic X, when Sonic's not around, you need to be so engaged in these other characters that when Sonic does show up, it's not finally sonic's here it's oh my gosh sonic's here yeah. let's go here. and so like and i think that's just what sonic storytelling if you're going to do that aspirational side because i really love um that that side the way to write a character you just have to you have to use it with intention whereas a western yeah. sonic uh, like what we're talking about like the movie sonic you can have those internal monologues and those and those deep or those like uh motions of kind of falling into your feelings and all those things because now it's an actively constantly uh evolving and 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 um uh, like you're you're really digging into those and making that the point of the story. So it's just kind of really about like context. Uh, it's all about execution as always. Yeah, and I so. guess yeah. like honestly, the Luffy comparison is one I have used a lot because I I do see the way Sega has traded Sonic as a very like similar uh, situation. Like like you were saying, they they keep Luffy out of certain things so the other characters can have things to do. And then Luffy shows up at the end to to kick ass, you know? And, like, it's very obvious that uh, Luffy can't be there the whole time. Like, especially in the earlier arcs, like, like, like something like Arlong Park. You know how, like, it's, it's as stupid as he's <laughs> he got his leg caught in a brick and he's underwater for, like, nine episodes. Three for nine, like, yeah, because he just got stuck in a rock. And so it's like, all right, yeah, it's, fine, it's Zoro. It's like, and... okay, I get it. You know, like, because right. if Luffy showed up now, the arc would be over. And Sonic's like that, too. Like, in Forces, again, I hate bringing that up so many times, but, like, in Forces, they bench Sonic immediately for five minutes so Eggman can take over the world. Because if he's not there, I guess everyone else just sucks. I, yeah, I hate and, what uh, that says about the other characters. But I, I think that's it's another very thing lame. as well. Is like, I, I, I think the, the yeah, truth like is, there, there's the argument that Sonic is a static character, and then there's the argument that he isn't. I say it should depend on the circumstance. Like, you can mm. have stories like, as you've said, like Black Knight, but in a story like Forces, if Sonic is looking at a world that is burning and people are dying left and right, and he's like, eh, all right, this should be fun, then he's a sociopath. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. They <laughs> they didn't design us. They they took Sad AM's premise and they said, yeah, we'll just stick Game Sonic in there. And it doesn't work at all. It doesn't obviously. work. Yeah. yeah. Like, like That's why what I like about One Piece is that the other characters actually do do things. They do all, you know, like it's too. Yeah, it, it's great. Like that, they have such good characterization, and they they go through their own little personal struggles. I loved all that stuff with Usopp pretty early on when he was like, I guess it wasn't super early, but like uh, around the times where they they were button heads a lot. Like that was really unique. Like the weakest character on the team is is putting up such a strong backlash against the captain who is like you know who can just clear him in seconds basically they even have that fight i think it's around water seven and, and it's it, it's such a huge thing like i I almost find myself thinking like, like like this is a really great way to show like the dynamic versus static characters because luffy being so static makes the other characters feel so much more dynamic and I, I think they could do that with sonic it's just uh yeah they just need it, to it's inconsistent the other characters well too yeah, exactly. They gotta give them things to do and let them do those things. That's why Frontiers is very nice. You know, like, Frontiers is kind of like what I've been enjoying from One Piece, let's say. Frontiers you know, makes they, me they happy give because the characters things to do. 
Frontiers makes me happy because they just treat the characters with a baseline level of respect as well. It's, again, it's an Ian Flynn thing. But also taking weaknesses of previous stories and turning them into strengths. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously what happened with Tales when Infinite was on the scene. You know, how we're, we're not just going to brush that under the rug. We're going to acknowledge it. We're going to work on this, you know? I like that. Hmm. Well, uh, what were you going to say, Lord? Oh. I thought earlier, I thought earlier you, you almost spoke. Oh, no, not too much. Not too much to say about Game Sonic right now. It's all cool, though. I was going to say, or One Piece. <laughs> or One Piece. Yeah, not too much to say about oh. One Piece. I mean, I like what I've read. I've never <laughs> seen any One Piece media, so I'm kind of in the same boat. I don't even know what a Sonic is. <laughs> Lower, how does this pertain to uh, Attack on Titan? Go. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm working on right now is an Attack on Titan video. <laughs> That's that it. We all have crazy. our things that we do associate these threads with, because when we get to kind of i guess we can kind of move into the shadow discussion a little bit um archie shadow is what i've been begging for shadow to be for a while because you guys refer to things like one piece attack on titan all that i'm gonna i'm gonna refer back to my thing again all right old old sunset city tradition when i was watching Zack snyder's justice league and i saw <laughs> An enlightened Batfleck, this guy who'd previously been running people down, shooting him with guns and shit, and wanted to kill Superman. <laughs> when I saw this enlightened Batman that was all like, Faith, Alfred, Faith, I was like, see, this is what they should do with Shadow. This is this is who Shadow should be after he plummets into the earth, you know? An enlightened Shadow, one that <clears throat> I can kind of feel proud of, you know, for the journey he's been on, one that can be a bit more emotionally candid. And that's what Archie Shadow effectively is. Uh, with like i mean the 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 good the big kind of what if is kind of like what if shadow never lost his memories kind of you know and like you've got that bit where he gets to kind of actually speak to maria robotnik using that data drive thing and the whole like sort of dynamics with hope and stuff like that and i really love this version of shadow this is what i've been wanting man like a shadow that is actually finding a purpose within himself and trying to kind of actualize and kind of trying to open his own heart in a way you know like i get it yeah. yeah i really yeah. like what they do with what they do with him they make him very um because i feel like in all versions of like games and shows and stuff he's like a very serious character but the way they take that in archie is that he's very earnest and like very on the nose and pointed almost. about what he feels to the point that he can be like kind of cheesy he's definitely not the same as the game or anything like that but i just I really like that version of the character. The thing I think about, like, Game Shadow, though, is like, it, it can mainly be summed up from the ending of Sonic Generations, where everyone's popped back to Sonic's birthday party, and, you know, they're saying their goodbyes to classic Sonic, and they're having some cake, and Shadow's just stood by a tree going, hmm. I'm like, fuck off, Shadow! Go get a piece of cake or <laughs> <Hug>. something! <laughs> Dude, it would be out. so funny if he was still he was still brooding, but he had a big piece of cake, and he went, and he had, well, like, the, the cake the in his is... mouth. Oh my god, we've come such a long way though, because like, murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, when he's at Amy's party, he's like, here's a hot honey ticket, let's go to a concert together, Amy, <laughs> you got a, you got a great story to tell, I hope it's chocolate cake, buddy, hell yeah, I'm like, that there is my boy, I'm proud of you, good going. <laughs> yeah, I, I like his characterization when he's at... Even it's it's kind of weird to say, but like I almost like his characterization a lot in like the Twitter takeovers. Yeah, the thing is, like, it's, like side... he's still so serious, but he's funny. Displaying you know? a softer side to Shadow makes that harder side cooler. Yeah, because he he knows when to have both of those sides. Like in, in specific reference to Archie, I I think uh, thinking back on it, the first Archie comic I ever read was Sonic Universe number one, because I just saw it. Yeah. At, you know, Newbury Comics, and I was like, oh, I like Sonic too much, so let's read this. Oh, Never that brings me I, to another thing. It, it kicks ass, because, like, Shadow's all about... First of all, he goes to the Soul Dimension, which is, like, that's cool. He gets but also, with and he gets marooned by Marine. <laughs> yeah. And he gets marooned. But, like, uh, the fact that he's going after Gamma, because they're both sort of in the same boat, like, and he can relate to Gamma, and then that paves the way for Omega becoming like a more friendly fella like i, I just I thought that was such that. A cool that idea. Awesome. It, it's so cool because because like omega i think shows up he's still on like eggman's robot destroys gamma but gamma is able to like life link with him or something and like send in like it, it's sort of like superior spider-man almost like he shoots mm -hmm. all his good memories into him before he dies and then he's he like i'm a cold. good guy now the only thing of um, you know sonic universe that i really know anything about is shard. Shadow. 
like Dylan, do you he's know about also Shard? Great. Yeah, I do. He's Shard is awesome. so fucking cool. I love Shard. Oh, yeah, I love all that stuff. That's going to be a big part of one of the later videos. I love what they do with him. It's like Metal Sonic with character development, and I'm all here for it. He's the original one. And they kind of do the have your cake and eat it too by having another Metal Sonic, and oh, the fact that he kills him just makes me so sad. Yeah, no, it's well, really like cool the, what they uh, do with him. Yeah, the, the, real, the real amazing thing that Flynn does with that is he not only gets to characterize the because he is the original uh, metal sonic that's the one he fights in the cd adaptation yeah um and mm. so like it's really cool that the first metal sonic gets redeemed that's really cool um, i love but the that thing so much is, yeah but the thing that um is always kind of forgotten is because he fights this other metal sonic and i think it's easy to look at um that metal sonic and kind of look at him as like okay and like here's like you know this is obviously like who he used to be and so you get the parallels and you know that's kind of like the, the most basic connection um and then you you don't really think about that metal sonic much as a character because he's just he's the cold-hearted machine um but they I do something so bad i think him oh, as like a yeah, grumpy right. retail store manager duty manager <laughs> <laughs> yeah but what they what they do with that metal sonic is so fascinating and tragic and it's i, th I think it's literally like the second to last um storyline in the whole comic and it's it's so tragic which is that they introduce so they introduce this this new metal sonic and um Eggman's like, okay, clearly I need to give this Metal Sonic some free will. I don't need to give him too much free will because then he turns into Shard. So I'm going to do this. He has a great idea. So I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you free will. You can you can remember every one of your fights throughout the entire comic, uh, and you can also think on them. Like you can make decisions uh, because he uses like this gem or whatever, um, which also Shard has. So the 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 gem represents like the soul in this in this instance. But he makes it to where if Metal Sonic has any thoughts that go against like working for Eggman basically and like doing you know like like disobeying him directly um then he gets a quick reset it like resets him and uh he's back to normal and he does what he's told and so we go we and they show this where he's like I want to fight Sonic and then he resets and he's like okay understood so Eggman has given him a soul but he's given him no reason to be able to act on it or no uh no ability to act on it but he's given him a mind to think about it so he fights Shard and Shard tells him he's like you know you don't have to like fight me you can be your own person you can be like me and all the way back to Shadow the Hedgehog, this like, you know, Shadow's thing of him trying to like save Metal Sonic, he has those memories. And he remembers when Shadow told him the same thing when he was a previous model. He's like, you know, your only existence is for destruction. And this is a Metal Sonic who's died over and over and over again. So he has all these memories. And so he thinks of that memory of Shadow and he just says only and he puts his hand down and he doesn't reset. Instead, he says, no, I have to destroy you. And Shard feels for him because he's like, oh, my gosh. You even if you wanted to fight back, you are so afraid to. You can't do it, and so I have to destroy you because you'll destroy them. If and and he takes out himself. So it's literally a story of not only just fighting an evil Metal Sonic, but it's a Metal Sonic who is also been given the ability to have a soul, and he has to lose that to this Metal Sonic who has found a purpose, and he also loses his life. So these two Metal Sonics are basically in this this clash where neither of them are able to have a happy ending. Um, and it's awesome. It's tragic. And by the end of it, because they destroy the, the gem, they both lose their soul. Shard basically dies, it seems. And that Metal Sonic loses its shard. Now he has all the memories of fighting, but he doesn't have that soul anymore. And now he is the final perfected Metal Sonic who has defeated, who has basically destroyed the idea of a Metal Sonic having a soul. And that's the last we ever see of him. And so that that is Metal Sonic. And it's just this wonderful journey that was never planned. And now the whole series, you can track the evolution of a metal sonic and the answer it comes to is metal sonic is not destined to have a soul he is not allowed that is like one it's so sad like batman the animated <laughs> the series levels of tragic that's that's like oh god that makes me just read I feel the like comic I need to go eat people. something it's just good <laughs> <laughs> i need to go fill the void in my heart now with like pizza <laughs> Uh, it's such a good story. I, I do agree that it's kind of too soon, but, like, it is such a good story. Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love oh so the, he was going to fall in stuff, love. Even where it ends. He was going to oh, fall yeah, in Nicole, love with Nicole. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's excellent. <laughs> it's so good. God. <laughs> Why? <sighs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh... I need to make a PowerPoint about Shard now. <laughs> Except it'll be, it'll be really respectful. We need another Archie episode. Back. If only there was some kind of guest that wants to talk about Archie at some point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm so glad that you know uh, more people are making videos. I know, um, 
I think Game Apologist obviously said multiple times he's going to make videos. So I just hope, you know, more and more and more people get to spread the love of Archie Sonic and just find, because at the end of the day, obviously these are just stories. And what I love about stories is how they are abstractions of people and life experiences. And I just think whether it's a tragedy or a happy, uh, happy story or whatever, um, the Archie Sonic comic has people worth caring about, has characters worth caring about. A good, um, um... And a lot of them have been forgotten. A good chunk of my Archie knowledge actually comes from editing videos for Game Apologist. <laughs> like, <laughs> whenever I do his, like, Sonic <laughs> Speed reading ones, I actually have to read the comic to understand what the fuck he's talking about to edit the video. Um, yeah. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> like, whenever I do. <laughs> yeah, man, Archie Sonic is cool. <laughs> well, um, shall we? Uh, are we quite happy with the discussion? I'm good. I'm, oh, I've had yeah. a great time. Anything you boys want to add before we go into super chats? No, I think I'm all good. But yeah, and thanks for having uh, thanks for having me on. I mean, it's been a really good time. Of course, yeah, no, it, it's my, honestly it, the pleasure's all mine. I've I've loved chatting with you guys. Well, no, I've had excellent time, and uh, I had well. one of the biggest laughs this week. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That that is. I'm really glad for that. That was for something uh, I put together in like uh, probably not even six minutes. Like I just googled Nate Morgan and like was scrambling like. Genuinely, I'm so happy. That is my favorite of the so PowerPoint well. party episodes. <laughs> Sometimes inspiration strikes and you don't need time. You just need the drive. You need the emotion. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to go look back at that. That that's gotta be like a clip or something. That that's just that was so fun. I was crying. I was actually crying. I don't I, know I, how I well I picked someone. up the continuous explosion. Um, <laughs> we kept I going did, like a lot. <laughs> I didn't even notice there was a continuous explosion. I heard you guys oh, were no. all laughing for a prolonged period of time, and I thought we'd just lost it. And you're like, oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it's, okay, it's I have to go weird. back and look at it. But yeah, no, Ugh. so good. Um, all right then, we'll move on to super chat. So the way we do this is we kind of go around in the table order. Okay. So that's what's on the Oof. screen. Um, so it would go Dilnor myself, Ian, and then Loart. Um, so we've got the Super Chat mailbag. I'm going to put a burger remote underneath the Super Chat that needs being read next. That's how we roll. Okay, okay. so Dilnor, you want to start us off? Uh, yeah, hold on, let me open the Discord. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Sonic Fan 1661, as always, the five US dollars. Hell yeah, time for a much-needed reprieve from the work week with probably the only podcast I've listened to almost every episode. Much love, y'all. That's really nice. Thank oh, you, Oh yeah, thank you, Sonic Fan 1661 We appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Porker. <clears throat> Sonic Fan 1661 is back again! <laughs> very generous. <laughs> with two US dollars and a very sad message, Pup's dementia is already in full swing today. How did this, <laughs> how did this become a fucking thing? I forgot a thing once and now suddenly... There's a canon that I just have dementia now. And what an awful thing. One time, <laughs> what an awful one time thing. He forgot something. I mean, no, and to be fair, there is, a, there is a trend to be quite forgetful. Remember last week's episode with Mark and I forgot to switch the audio on for the first couple of minutes? <laughs> that happens to everyone. I do that every stream I do, I think. I forget to turn my mic on, so I'm sitting it's there the talking. It's the fact that and... OBS <laughs> switches back to the default audio input and I use like a driver to enhance the audio anyways it doesn't it doesn't matter Ian it you're up TJ <laughs> Nightwolf with $50 thank you so much Jesus. Archie Sonic is best Sonic yeah, yeah. that's wild dude. I, I saw Archie that Sonic. one come in live uh, that's super generous that's they're all generous but this is super generous <laughs> we're grateful for all of them but we are much more grateful for this one i mean 50 dollars is a lot of money like yeah. that's that's like several hours how of could work, you be you know, so like... fiscally irresponsible tj nightwolf <laughs> all right loa you're up Borg. And then, this is from seaman for <laughs> 15 bucks there's a lot to appreciate about Archie Sonic. And then there's the writer who made Big a relative of cannibals. And Sonic's a lookalike Violet what? Bunny on panel. Big what? poof. Anyways, good day, mates. Hashtag poo cut. It's true. That poo cut is... <laughs> yeah, none, uh, none of, of that was wrong. Mean? No, no, he's, he's actually not quite wrong. This is, uh, evil Sonic, under the guise of being regular Sonic, took a, a nap with Bunny Rabbit. Um, but to be what fair, if we just take it at his word... It's just a nap, right? If we just—it was just it... a nice nap, yeah. you know. It was a nice 
nap. They just had a nap, yeah. Maybe sex Get doesn't exist in the Sonic universe. Maybe maybe <laughs> babies come from the storks. I don't know. Like that you know I could see like a realistic stork like flying in and being like, Here's your child. Yeah, it could happen, you know? It could happen. That's what happens in Mario. But then no, uh then you if sex didn't the exist, animal. they wouldn't draw those women with those mammaries, would they? So it is what it is. Um <laughs> Also, uh, okay. yeah, Knuckles is kind of a bit of an incest fella as well, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a bit of that floating around in the comic too, if you think about it. It's there. <laughs> Knuckles is British. I was saying, do you need clarification, Dylan? Uh, sure. Help him out. Okay. <laughs> for, the, for the cannibal one, uh, it is that uh, there are a race of cat people that Big is a part of. He's like a fisherman or whatever. He doesn't really care about him. He just kind of does his own thing. Um, and they, they, there's an offhand comment. They like capture the chaotix, and uh, and the leader. Uh, they're like, "Well, they'll they'll be nice to us, right?" And they're like, uh, "No, we're pretty vicious. We'll even eat our young if they misbehave." And they're like, "Ha ha, yeah, real funny, R right?" And uh, it's never clarified. So that's really <laughs> funny. Oh God. That's really funny it's though. That, that's the Anakin Skywalker Padme meme, where he's like, y "You're just kidding, right?" <laughs> <He's> right. Like, <laughs> What's back? Uh, that's oh, I, I. That's insane. That's. I, Wow! Yes. As you can okay. as you can see, you do need to read the comic because we don't we can't mention everything. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say, a kid in a Holocaust poetry. Well, we well can that mention. one's in the video. Yeah, that one we talk about. Um, oh, it's a classic right. moment, no doubt. Classic. I was uncomfortable. I read it out for the video, um, and it was one of my most uncomfortable <laughs> moments. So, Dude, actually, you know what I just thought of? I was fucking in the parking lot of Subway eating a sandwich when you guys started talking about Tammy being in love with Dr. Robotnik, and that's something I forgot to bring up earlier. And I, I was just it. sitting there eating my fucking we tuna sandwich, Tammy. being like, Tammy, you know, good on you for, for pursuing oh, Tammy's a dreams. badass. I got uh, my wife to penis. read off Tammy's uh, letter. <laughs> It was a very good moment. I was just, I, like, I, it was one of those moments where I hear this and I, I stopped eating. Like, I stopped chewing. I stopped eating. I had to look at my phone for a second. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that and the uh, Nazi echidnas are, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a Ken was swinging. <laughs> so actually, yeah, on the subject of. Doing something. On the subject of Ken, though, there's obviously a lot of discussion about Ken. He's obviously a very controversial fella. <laughs> And, like, in the past, we, we've kind of said things of, like, yes, Ken Penders does bring a lot of ridicule onto himself, but we're yeah. also kind of, we are not advocates for the dehumanization of creatives when it comes to these kind of things. Um, so, given that you guys have actually talked to the good Ken himself, like, what were your experiences like? What, like, divorced from, you know, his social media tomfoolery and any lawsuits and stuff like what were those conversations like were they nice oh yeah no he was i mean yeah the whole interview is in the description of the the knuckles video like the main one i think it's like knuckles comic has lost its mind or something like that yeah um and yeah he was great for that like he he was just really clearly excited to talk about the comic he has like an encyclopedic knowledge of it's everything scary. he did on it super yeah. passionate about it <laughs> tons of like behind the scenes details to give and um yeah, no, talking to him really put a lot of the choices he made into perspective for the comic and confirmed a lot of suspicions I had for, like, why he chose to tackle some of these subjects, even if it could get strange. Like divorce um, and death and all that stuff. Yeah, and that what? whole third video about the Knuckles comic was kind of like, I mean, you don't have to like it, you don't even have to respect it, but, like, there's clearly an intentionality there behind what he was doing. Yes. And as funny as it is, like, it's really cool to look at the logic of why someone made this. And maybe there's something to some of those ideas. Who was it that wrote the do dosey domestic abuse story? That was uh, my boy, Benny Lee, uh, a.k.a. Carl Bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that yeah. was also crazy to me that he had the two aliases. <laughs> <laughs> there's a yeah, the yeah, Sonic. There's... That, that's like, um, that's like in... If you've ever seen Dragon Ball, I mean, I guess you don't have to have seen it, but Dragon Ball Evolution, the guy that played Piccolo in the movie, he went on to voice uh, Zamasu in the, the Dragon Ball Super anime later under a different name. Because he was like, I don't want people to hate me. I don't want people to get mad. That reminded me of that. Gotcha. Well, I yeah. mean, so, well, like two things. Uh, one would be the, um, for, well, let's get incest out of the way so we answer this question. So, uh, Knuckles' family line. Uh, obviously, he has like his great grandfather Dimitri, who's like the the head in a jar or whatever. Um, so obviously, uh, Knuckles uh, ends up dating and uh, 
getting together with uh, a girl from the Dark Legion who was spawned from his great grandfather. Um, and Ken eventually put in a family tree. It's not in the story itself, but it's a family tree he developed. And clearly, like a lot of his his the things he likes, um, like DC or whatever, he just kind of he took the idea of Star Wars and how this whole idea of uh, the like the bloodlines connecting and all these different things, the Force and the dark, and so he wanted to do that with Knuckles. And so Julie Sue is a very, 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 very distant cousin of his. So the the people joke that it's incest. Um, it's so far that it literally doesn't even matter. Like it's like they're like barely genetically connected, but because it exists, you can't like you like you say it. You're like, holy shit, Ken, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> So, the fact that I started singing "It Doesn't Matter" in my head in response to this it makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it it doesn't matter. And if you watch the Knuckles video, we talk about Julie Sue. Julie Sue is such like a cool character. Like she has a great design. She has really um <clears throat> like really powerful scenes she, she has with Knuckles and stuff. She has no <laughs> pants. You know the whole package. So you you have you have this really cool character, and it's just sad that you know it gets resorted down to just like, yeah, like evolved the, to that. Yeah, all that stuff. And then, stuff. like, all the echidnas get disintegrated and never mentioned again after certain periods. Yeah, so probably, it's like, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, there's all these really cool stuff. And then I wanted to bring up a... You, you talked about Archie being, like, this Wild West and, like, behind-the-scenes shenanigans. One of the funniest ones is that... So, in IDW, um, anytime that you, you had the character of Lanolin, right? Um, so before this, mm -hmm. she had the name Lanolin, but this was not official. She was just a lamb girl in the comic. But everyone called her Lanolin, and eventually she became a real character. She she was she I mean she was around the whole time, but she never had a name. And now she is a character. She has the name Lanolin. That is an official thing, which means that she is officially owned by Sega because she has a name. She is not just like some name. Because you know if you just draw like a, a background character, or whatever. If they're not a person, Sega doesn't have to sign off on like oh here's Zombot six hundred and twelve, right? Um, mm -hmm. But for Lanolin, they had to. That's why she has a name. So there's a monkey guy who um, in the IDW, and his name was supposed to be Grease the Monkey, but Sega didn't give a shit about him, so they just said, no, he's just a monkey guy, so he doesn't have a name. Now, I want to compare this to Archie. Archie, ostensibly, needed to do the same thing. They needed to sign off on every single character. Your sleuth doggy dogs, your Sir Kicks a lot, your evil Sonics, you know, all these different things. You have to, uh, your Betty Butterflies, you have to sign off on this. So Archie decided, fuck that, who wants to do that? And that's why we have all those characters, because Sega and Archie just decided not to do, to do that. <laughs> So <laughs> awesome. So that is why the lawlessness. Archie, yeah, the, the lawlessness of Archie. Like again, when people talk about Archie and how messed up and weird it is, it is genuinely as weird and messed up as you think it is. <laughs> and it's also like one of my favorite stories ever. So like it it's just everything. Um and it's just so funny all these these behind the scenes things, like the Carl Bowlers, uh, you know, making a pseudonym Benny Lee, and uh even like the way I got it out of him to to oh yeah, I should mention the Carl Bowlers thing. So Carl Bowler's worked on the comic and I messaged him like four years ago and I just said, hey, you know, I was like, is this the Carl Bowler's? And he's like, yeah, it's me. And I checked his Facebook. It all checked out. Um, and so, you know, he was just on Messenger. So I was just like, oh, I'll message him. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's me. And he's like, yeah, I would totally answer these questions. And three years passed and every like six months I would be like, hey, Carl Bowler's, do you remember me? He's like, yeah, man, I want to get back to you. And so finally I was like, dude, I got to give you a deadline because we're making this video. He's like, okay. So he sat down and he wrote like, paragraph after paragraph after paragraph for every single one of my questions so he legitimately was just like busy and probably forgot about me i'm just some random guy but it, it mm -hmm. was three years in the making to get carl bowlers to talk to me and then at the last minute i learned about this benny lee thing and i'm like oh by the way are you benny lee and he goes uh, uh, uh maybe wink <laughs> and he, and he <laughs> like a real boy comment like i love that even now he wanted to keep that mystery going which i think is really funny but like he you know without saying it he said like yeah i it respect me. it I, yeah, I respect he, that. And the, the funniest thing I asked him is, uh, and this is how you know, like, he got caught, but he didn't realize that he was he was fully answering it when I said this. I said, um, when you killed Nate Morgan, did you did you mean it? I said, did you mean it, or did you intend to bring him back? And he said, oh, I meant it. <laughs> oh my... Nate can't catch a break, can he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it was personal. It was personal. <laughs> There's two nukes for you, Nate. Here you yeah. go, buddy. So funny. That's so funny. I love that extra bit of information. There, there's so many behind the scenes stories about Archie that are just just insane. And we tried oh, to cover it. No, you know what? Nate was holding a ring, so he actually survived. He was okay. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, Bowler's actually said one of his plans, if he were to bring Nate Morgan back, is that he did survive the nuke. He got de-roboticized by the, the aliens or whatever. And then he was found by, he would be found by Coconuts the monkey because Nate would have like, d d like amnesia. And so uh, Coconuts the monkey would use Nate Morgan's genius to build like monstrous robots. And he would become a third party trying to like destroy Sonic. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Get revenge. Oh, that's so cool. If you, if you, if you ever want to learn about that, like um, if you go on the Sonic wiki, uh, if you just type in like lost ideas or something like that, um, people have cataloged uh ken pender's lost ideas like things he said he wanted to do and i mean we got we got to talk about that whole jeffrey st john's being a little faster to the punch than sonic thing right yeah, oh virginity. gosh <laughs> brother oh gosh Bro, I don't brother I talk about that. oh you don't know about this no i do know about it oh you do know about this everyone knows about this because that was a big thing on twitter and i i, I saw that i was like oh brother Ugh. well big dylan move. you're up with the next one or... sorry yeah that was I appreciate all that. Extra. That was like that was awesome. There's, oh, there's so much. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. That was good. No, that, yeah, that's don't, what don't this apologize. We love about. that kind of stuff. All right. This is like getting sidetracked is my favorite part of this whole thing. And I mean, it wasn't even a sidetrack. That was just like <laughs> that was just more of the main topic. <laughs> just read the uh, fucking yeah, super so, chat, Dylan. So, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So uh, next up with Yaz Yozoi Yazoi, uh, five Canadian dollars. Uh, mainly for Lower and Ian Waffles, are you guys familiar with the channel Sonic Speed and their podcast about the Archie Sonic Digest? Shout out to them. Low art. Uh, I don't think I've seen any of their stuff, but that sounds cool. You know, I like people yeah. talking about the comic. The comic's cool. Maybe I'll have to check it out. Low art's a fraud. I've seen it. Um, they're cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they make they they they've been doing this for even longer than uh, we have. Uh, and they've talked about everything. They have they have clips for certain like moments they've talked about. They're currently on Fleetway. Um, so if you really want to like see more people talk about this, like really in depth and like giving their thoughts or whatever, and they go like page by page too, um, definitely check them out. They're great. Shouting out enemy podcasts on our show. That's it, <laughs> Yazoi. You're going down. They gave us five dollars though. <laughs> yes. Well. Yeah, but they're Canadian, now you have to give us five more. <laughs> <laughs> my sad monopoly money. My country's sad monopoly money. <laughs> Borker. And it's my turn. I've got Xanderoni with 10 US dollars. It's amazing to see Loart and Ian Waffles on this show. The Knuckles PowerPoint enlightened me. Amazing work, you guys. Thank yeah, you. Well, thanks. It enlightened Thank us all. You. Hell yeah. I need to see it for myself so I can be enlightened. Oh gosh. It's, it's something interesting to say the least. <laughs> so I'm going to take this next one um, and I'm just going to say Mike1911, thank you so much for the 499. I have acknowledged your super chat in the chat just now. So, yeah, got an answer to that one. Um, all right, Ian, you're up. Borger. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, uh, wait, yeah. Uh, sorry, Mike the last one. Oh, sorry, yeah, oh, Ms. The yeah, the last one in the chat, sorry. Mr. Like, Terry oh, Chaos. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, you get one of the fun ones. Mr. Terry Chaos to two dollars no sex what about pregnant sonic well hold on you you're missing pregnant tails there's nothing from, wrong uh... with pregnant sonic oh. i think i want to <laughs> put a ring on it like, oh, no. <laughs> he's a hero and a mother nato glow like no one other <laughs> I mean, sonic has had children in the comics like that, that's it's uh in the 25 years later thing that's actually one i read as well because I, I don't know why i just found the comic and but, as if the universe found a little balance for us Loat's got another one to read. Bark. Oh, heck yeah. From Twilord, $5. Archie Sonic lore somehow managed to be as crazy as the actual game lore would choose to be ahead of time. Daddy Doom as an Archie OC would fit. There we go. Daddy Doom. And as if the universe were playing one cruel practical joke on us, we are no longer perfectly balanced. Dylan. <laughs> uh, we need three more super chats, guys. <laughs> Restore the balance. This is two dollars. Burger. Uh, shout out to Bumblecast, a rival podcast. That is <laughs> that is a good one. Oh, How Twilord dare again. you? <laughs> Twilord back. Let's go. Okay, so I'm now up with Twilord, and we're now receiving these faster than I can log them. So that's interesting. Burger. Okay, so Twilord sends five euros. Would be surprised if Black Doom in Shadow Generations pulls an Adam. Or would you be surprised, sorry, if Black Doom in Shadow Generations pulls an Adam? 
Uh... I don't remember who Adam is. I'm sorry. Adam's the guy who kills Tommy Turtle. He gets possessed. Yeah, or just an evil, evil oh. guy. He kind of ties all the Bad past guy. lore together to. I was thinking of try he, to make sense of all this stuff. He's also Robotnik's son, sort of. Yes. Yeah. He's his. Uh, he was uh, not oh. planned, as he said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's that's in the comic. <laughs> Robotnik. Wow. What, Extensive he's use of the. Yeah, indeed. Oh, uh, I mean, would I be surprised? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, if we're talking about like a master manipulator situation, uh, or maybe like getting atomized or whatever to like have shadow grow or whatever. I, I have no clue what they're doing with shadow and shadow generations. It'll be really fascinating to see. Mm -hmm. I'm super. It's gonna be great. I'm looking I, forward I just, to it. I'm hyped for him to look cool. You know. Yeah, no, right. I really hope that's good. <laughs> Sonic Generations is like one of my favorite, one of the games. I love oh, that game. It's so great. I'm about to play it again tomorrow. I'm super excited. Nice. Ian, yeah, I've been playing through it. You've got one. You're up. Okay. Uh, Sonic fan. <laughs> no message. Sonic fan. Sixteen sixty one. Uh, here's a dollar. I added the here. Oh the... shit! There were th three more. Look. Oh, beautiful timing. Beautiful timing. Whale Fox Johnson. Loa, you're <laughs> up. Yeah, from Whale Fox Johnson for five dollars. Quick dive. Do you think the movies would have an evolution? As... Do you think the movies would have an evolution as Archie and the games? Would you want to see that? So I guess like as much of an evolution kind of thing. Um, I mean, it'd be cool. I haven't seen any of the movies. I'm a fraud, as Ian said. It'd be it'd be good for longevity. You're you know, a if fraud, they kept uh, Lord, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, wait till the third one comes out and you can just binge them. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is I'll just watch them then, see what they're about. Oh no! <laughs> they're fun. They're fun. We're it, no I mean, longer I perfectly the balanced. <laughs> The first one is okay. The first one, I think a lot of people have said it's like a movie with Sonic in it, but the second one mm -hmm. feels a lot more like a Sonic movie. Yeah, oh, and nice. I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, it, I think the first one uh, thrives just on the fact that it's a solid family film, more so than anything else. Like, because I think everything there yeah. is good. It's just, yeah, like, if you're hoping for, like, extensive, like, Sonic-y Sonic stuff, like, yeah, no, it, it's a movie that has Sonic in it. It's still his movie, yeah. but, like, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. what's great about them is just that, um, you know, I, I, I think those movies are the first time I felt like the kind of like the older brother effect for like the next generation where I'm like, man, I'm so happy that just like kids will be able to grow up thinking Knuckles is cool again. Or like imagine oh, like yeah. you're, and you're a kid who sees like supersonic in theater and like, again, you have no context for like Dragon Ball Z or, you know, the fucking world or anime or anything. So like that's your that's your first experience with that. I just think like <clears> the Sonic <throat> movies, they're just cute for me. But, like, I think, like, for what they're doing for just, like, a new generation of Sonic fans, they're just, like, wonderful, great things that they exist. I'm so happy that, that yeah. people get One those. of my favorite little moments was uh, I was watching the first Sonic movie in theaters with a bunch of my friends. And uh, at the end of the movie... Okay, actually, Laura, do you care about... You know... Oh, Tails. no, I don't care whatsoever. You can say whatever. You know? <laughs> Sorry, I was about to be like, oh, don't want to spoil Tales being in the movie. But, you know, yeah, that's the, okay. <laughs> Sonic yeah, this time nukes Nate Morgan and others. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic movie three, please. But uh, yeah, Tails jumps Maria. out of the big ring and he's like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm Tails the fox. And then some little kid somewhere in the theater just went, oh, Tails. And I was like, <laughs> oh, like, I, felt like the, I felt like the Grinch with his heart growing three times that day. Like, that's awesome. I like. I was just like, Sonic. this is nice. I'm glad that happened. But uh, uh, that's all I have to say about that. All right, Absolutely. Dill nor fucking Sonic fan 1661 has fucking ruined it. So burger. I I said thanks in the chat. Thank that you doesn't for that. Count. I appreciate the one. Thank you for the one dollar, Sonic fan. I, I, I am also it. obligated to refer to you as a yogurt male because you want to give and not be heard. So there we go. <laughs> Thank you, yogurt male. What? I'm assuming you're a male, actually. Now that I think about it. I don't know anymore. I'm sorry if I've just made a colossal mistake. Um, I, I just like how you say yogurt. I'm British. If, if it's a mistake, you can just blame the dementia. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I, I, hey! <laughs> hey, welcome to the podcast, everybody. This is... Uh, <laughs> we're starting All right, Squilord, if you want to say three more, I ain't going to say no. Now we sit here okay, twiddling our thumbs right. and waiting for money. <laughs> okay cool. i'm very greedy all right no okay so, well this, is, um, this has been good i think <laughs> i had a lot of fun today oh questioning okay all right cool thank you sonic fan 1661 i won't make that mistake again 
Alrighty, um, so that is the end of the episode. You know what that means. Or the skeleton. Yeah, the skeleton's here. Alright, we gotta go. Um, so, <laughs> um, fuck. Alright, um, I'm gonna go around the table. Loa, what are you up to? What am I up to? This yeah, is what's, like we're plugging things. What's new? Yeah, it's now plugging time. Want. Oh, plugging things. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just got my channel where I put out what? How you you know, doing, videos. Man? Archie videos. Heck yeah, you can check those out. I got a second channel, uh, Lower It's Lounge, where I put out my stupid uh, Sonic music that I make for the videos because I get bored Hell sometimes yeah. while editing and I make music for them. Um, your brother. That's mainly what I do. So, yeah, if you want to check those things out, that would be cool. Hell yeah. Before we go on to Ian, we've got Twilord with two euros. Black Doom is love. Thank you. True. Wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's correct. I'm supposed to read that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Ian, what are you up to? Uh, what I've been doing for the past year, which is mooching off of Low Art's insane kindness and patience. So <laughs> I'll continue to make uh, videos alongside him and having a great time while doing it. Um, my own channel, if anyone here is even a fan of me somehow, uh, I will hopefully make videos one day. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, that's me. Well, you got videos <laughs> on your channel. Yeah, you ought that. to do more, man. You yeah. got you pulled in the numbers with the Sonic one. Also, I got you another little super chat for you to read, Ian. <laughs> Uh, from Twilord, two dollars. Black Doom is law. Yeah, well, that's but no, fun. check out his channel. The reason I I wanted to make videos with him is because his videos are good. Let me get a link. The to video, the Kingdom Hearts two video. Hell yeah, check those Kingdom out. Hearts They're good. Video, thank you. Let me get a link to. You know, no, I don't want a cooking show. I just want about, to, okay, about how Kingdom Hearts two is the best one. All it's right, very good. and Loa, you've got one last super chat to read, and the super chat cutoff is now. You send anything more, we won't read it. Burger. All right, from Twilord for two euros. Black Doom is Lord. All right, hell the yeah, three we L's. Balance. No, come on, no, stop it, Sonic fan, sixteen sixty one. All right, all right, fine. I'm just gonna read this one, so there's no balance to worry weird. about. Rouge is hot, yo. Yes, she is. Thank you. Dylan, what are you up to? Uh, I released a video last week about a Silver the Hedgehog fan game from 2008. Uh, that was kind of fun. And Oh, it's got the tomorrow... best soundbite I've ever heard in that video as well. Is that the all our bases belong to us, that no, one? No, it's the bit where you go, cheating is... Was it justified or...? Warranted. Warranted. That's the one. Yeah. That like taking that out of context is really Dylan's great. horrible yeah, relationship advice. I, but uh, I had fun making that one. Uh, gonna be. I don't know what video is coming out next week. I haven't decided yet. But also, I'm streaming Sonic Generations tomorrow, just on my YouTube channel, playing it with mods and stuff, just because. Uh, I've I've been thinking a lot about Sonic Generations, and I want to play it again. And he's invited his co-host Pup to right? No, no. Okay. We'll see. Fine, I just want to hang out. <laughs> I just want to hang out. Is it? I don't know, man. I, I, it might be. Yeah, you can if you're around. Sure. I just want to hang out. Yeah. I'd, yeah. Oh, I'll text you tomorrow. Oh hell yeah! All right, <laughs> pop. What are you do, working on? Uh, yeah, I don't know yet. To be honest, I don't know what my next YouTube video is going to be. No, I've that's been fair. very focused on this little Sonic fan film project that I've been working on, but um. It's it's all it's all good. Uh, I'm not going to reveal anything today, um, but it's all good. Yeah, Pup makes movies. Like that's awesome, <laughs> dude. <laughs> thank you. No, I have to he check that out. Very cool Klonoa cool. fan film. Oh, thank you, Dylan. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Yeah, of course. Love me some Klonoa. Wahoo! All right, well the episode's over. Who wants the last word? Whoa! Bye! Let's see. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> My name's Sonic! Yeah. <laughs> it's me. I get the last word. Oh.